Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Post Perez. I'm WH Park, and uh, I should say we didn't have a Post Perez for September. Just my schedule and, and John Pollock's schedule, just just crazy. It was just really hard to to pin either of us down together, um, uh, mainly for John as well, because mostly for John, I, I should say, because like he, he does have a family, he he does have to watch all the G one. I I have not been watching all of the G one, and but we're going to talk about the G one with someone who's been watching, I think, all of the G one, if not most of it. But uh, and, but yeah, we're going to have me and John. We'll do a show probably later this month once the G one is over and he has a bit more time freed up. But, uh, you know, today on this episode, I have a special guest, a returning guest, and someone who actually made their uh, post-wrestling uh, writing debut for us recently with a great review of the five-star Grand Prix uh, finals, which we're, we're going to talk about actually probably at the start of this episode. And, and joining me today on Post Perez is Karen Peterson. Karen, welcome back. It's so great to be back. It, it's, I can't believe the last time I was here was April and it's already October. It's crazy. Time flies. It's just flown by. It's just flown by. Yeah, I I think I've done several. Like I haven't even done like a like you know guest spot show with that many people since you. Um, well, I just, am a hard act to follow. So it is, it is true. This is true. <laughs> I I I. There's very few people I know who who watch as much Japanese wrestling as you. This includes myself because like I just been swamped with other things in my life that it's hard for me to car- even just to carve out the time to say I'm going to watch, you know, all Japan or Stardom or whatever. It's just like there's also like an abundance of stuff to watch for me because I do like things. In Joshi, besides stardom, I do want to watch like Ice Ribbon and Marvelous and things like that. I do want to watch Big Japan Pro Wrestling uh, for just like stuff that's not New Japan or or all, or all Japan. And then there's the N1 and Noah and, and things to do. But um, but yeah, like how have you been keeping up with uh, your your fandom for Pro Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. <laughs> like between catching up on the five star to write my review for it. Uh, the G1, the N1, that alone has taken up almost all of my time. And then I've been to the new NXT 2.0. I've started dabbling in watching Impact and Ring of Honor. And since a lot of my favorites from WWE are now working at AEW, I from time to time begrudgingly watch AEW. So it's just like there's a wrestling on in my house all the time. I, so I have this- had to actually. I've had to actually like schedule non wrestling programming to watch in my house. So I'm like, I need to watch something other than people in spandex all day. There you go. I, I, I wish I could say the same <clears throat> in the sense of not watching people in spandex, but if I'm not watching wrestling, I'm probably watching like something Marvel, Marvel related on Disney plus. So that, that kind of counts as spandex too. In, in, in a sense, but. <laughs> Different kind of spandex. I have this theory though, like, like at some point I was talking to someone about this, um, like earlier this week, like, you know, I can see a shift happening over the next couple of years with AEW where where like the original kind of class of AEW, like uh, especially like the quote unquote EVPs are, mm-hmm. are going to get phased down. And then you're going to see all these people who are coming from like WWE who are going to have who are like way better in the ring and stuff and maybe a bit more savvy as it, as it were. And maybe Tony likes them a bit more. They're yeah. going to they're going to get phased in. You know what I mean? That's what I think is going to happen. If if that happens, hey, I'll be all in. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh, definitely. I'm a, I'm a, I love <laughs> I love puns. Come on, and sarcasm. It's one of my. Uh, it's a hallmark of WH Park. You know, it's like uh, your, your you know, signature. One of one of them. Oh, and, and just my toxic hatred of uh, of uh, certain people in wrestling. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just okay. This is my show, so. I can be oh, yeah, hateful, fair. hateful as much as possible. You don't have to join me in the hatred, but you know, like you know, you can be saucy if you'd like. But um, yeah, I, you, I might you, get spicy. You you might get spicy, Karen. It's, awesome. it's Saturday That'd night cool. past my bedtime. Uh, thank you, by the way, for, for <laughs> I'm up. an old lady. I'm like hmm, ten after ten. Are you serious? But you, you're not working tomorrow, so no, no, no. It's I, it's Sunday, but you know, got to catch up on the G1, and I got to <laughs> do some stuff on my house because being a homeowner is well work. So I understand, but uh, just so people um, are aware when we were recording this on a Saturday night, uh, like Eastern time. So the G1 hasn't happened yet. The N1 is about to happen. But we haven't 
it hasn't happened. So we don't know the results. So we're, we're going to be giving our, our predictions rather than results. It, I don't, I don't predict that, you know, Karen and I are going to be recording long enough to have results for the end one. That, that'd be really late yeah, for both her and myself. So I mean, we're, the, we're going to give your black predictions. matches are at the beginning of the card. So I mean, we could figure out who's going to the finals, but I don't think we're going to go a full like two and a half hours or anything to see the no. whole entire show. Well, well, we'll talk about our predictions okay. as we get to, as we get to the Noah section of the yeah. show, but we have a lot of topics today. We do. We do a yeah. lot of topics. So let, let's start off with uh, the fact that, you know, Karen uh, has, has done, you know, she she debuted on the website with a fantastic review. But that's, it was so good, Karen, that John Pollock DM'd me. And, and if just so people know, it's not often John Pollock DMs me because he is a busy man. But he DM'd me. He said, "This this stardom review from Karen is fantastic." I was like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, cool!" I I hadn't read it yet, but then I I went to go read it, and then I was like. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. So it's everyone, really- if, you if you haven't read it yet, go 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 to postwrestling.com. Look for the five star Grand Prix finals review from Karen and, and check it out. And then go to her Twitter at Hey Karen Sensei and, and, and say that article, that review was fantastic. Well, I mean, thank you for that. I mean, it means a lot to me that both you and John have been very supportive and you know bringing me in. And I can tell you, I was so nervous hitting send on it because. I didn't know that he was going to post a quick recap the morning of after the event finished. So I saw it go up and I went into panic mode. because I was like, did I not send my report in fast enough? Am I not typing this fast enough? And I, cause I, it was very, very epic. And I wanted to try to make it very readable. So there was lots of, it's broken down into very various sections, including a spoiler free part. So if you haven't seen all of the five-star Grand Prix, there's a, a quick blurb that says which matches are must watch can't miss and then ones that are just like here's a quick synopsis of what's going on i think but, you 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 messaged me saying i'm gonna try to you know like uh be you're, you're gonna be inspired by how mark mark buckledy does his reviews for the g1 on the site i got i got very positive feedback on it because like i guess some people either you know they get in their rss feed and they just they don't want to open it in the very first thing they see the spoilers is oh. they haven't read, read it so i was like okay so it, it yeah. kind of helped some people. So that made me happy. That's good. That's good. It's, it's, it's spoilers are a big thing for Japanese wrestling fans who don't live in Japan. Problem. Yes. I, I was, I was very fortunate for many years. I, I, I watched it pretty much live and didn't have to worry about being spoiled about any of the results nowadays, not so much, but so I just try to stay off Twitter if I really, really don't want to know about yeah. some things but yeah but, let, let, but Karen, let's start off with the five-star grand prix and and let's talk about what your overall thoughts about the tournament were and also like the the winner of the of the tournament was shuri and there's a lot of interesting happenings that came out of the, the the finals and like some of the results that that shuri decided not to cash in her her you know her title shot right away she's gonna wait for a later show. So in the meantime, we're going to get Utami Haishishida. She's going to defend the World of Storm title, the, the Red Belt, the Akai Belt, against uh, Marvelous's uh, Takumi Uraha, who used to be in, in Storm, was actually, I think, I believe, a first-generation member of the Stardom Dojo. Oh, excellent. I see. I, I'm still very new to Marvelous as a whole, so I, I heard the name. And uh, Takumi's performance in the Five Star has been absolutely incredible and i'm glad that she was able to be a part of it and then like the last day alone her match with with shuri was i would put it on par with utami versus uh both of them actually her utami's match with takami and then uh utami's match against shuri because they were both outstanding matches um but I, my biggest problem with the way that the last day was organized was that they did like all the red block matches first and then they did all the blue block matches second or the other way around. But Shuri only had like 20 minutes between her her time limit draw with Takumi Iroha before she had to wrestle Momo, a very fresh Momo Watanabe <laughs> in the finals. Well, I mean, it didn't really matter, did it? Because she, she beat Momo, so... Well, she- <laughs> Momo did Momo did what her best and she did she you know she did what she knew she needed to do to make the event a success and they what I loved about it was like you know we've talked previously like stardom is consistently one of the best booked promotions in Japan 
And on that day, they made a brand new top star out of her. Out of out of Momo? No, out of Shuri. <laughs> out of Shuri. Yes, yes no, out of Shuri. I, I think that was the trajectory ever since she she had the original time limit draw with yeah. Utami. And I think this tag team she has with Julia has just been outstanding and just really elevates the, those tag titles. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm very curious to see the result of like what, where Shuri's going with her career after you know, up up leading up to the the, the title match she's going to have. What, what what show are we going to be seeing that title match? Whether it's again it's Dami or Takumi Roha. It will be on December 29th at Rio Goku Stardom Dream Queendom. Literally a week before Wrestle Kingdom, Stardom's throwing their own Queendom. They're like, Mm-mm, we don't need to send them to the kingdom. They'll probably go to the kingdom anyway. But yeah. they're going to have their big end of the year event like three or four days right after their year end climax at co rock on Christmas day. There you go. Uh, and so I, I, I'm curious if she's still going to be the, the tag champs with Julia at that point. Cause I, I, I really, I'm not a huge fan of someone holding multiple titles in one company. Um, I, I, I don't like the fact, like, I don't like the SWA belt anyways. Cause I think it's such a stupid concept because it's like a world title, but you already yeah. have a world title in, the red belt like that just to me like that belt was i forget the exact origin of the swa belt but it was like created because someone else had the red belt i think it was like tony storm or something and then they just created this swa belt for for i don't know if it was eo or or i want to i want to say that they adopted that belt from a different promotion and like again i'm still relatively new to stardom but the concept behind the belt was to it, it was kind of like the gaijin belt like you, you both competitors could not be from the same country. So when Tony Storm was there and she carried it, it was easy because she could fight pretty much anyone other than the other foreigners that were from Australia, which was you know few and far between. But the interesting thing about Shuri carrying it is that she's embracing the Filipina side of her heritage. So she's the Filipina champ. So she can fight anybody because literally, other than Julia, to my knowledge, everyone else is completely Japanese. Right. Like even Julia is not like half uh, Filipino. She she is. She's half Italian. She's half Italian. There you go. So um, yeah, I, I'm curious to see what happens with that. I would I would hope that if she if she loses the tag titles, she keeps the SWA belt, and then they you know they close it. You know they seal it as as like the the term I like I like hearing you know with in Japanese wrestling we're gonna seal the belt. Yeah, we're gonna close it forever. I think she should just merge it with the 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 red belt and just like be done with it like I, I think stardom just has one of my my one of the things i do find fault with stardom is like they have too many belts i'm not a fan of the high speed belt because it look doesn't look like a stardom belt for one thing and i like the fact that they're all star shaped like the yeah. titles um also it's like i think that should just like if you have that and you have the future of stardom i like i think they're you get rid of that keep the future of stardom and make it the de facto high speed title that's my my opinion on that like as but like I think Wonder World artists and goddesses is is enough. I think everything else kind of dilutes title matches to me. But anyways, we're getting we're getting on a tangent here. <laughs> um, but like, what do you what do you think about like her trajectory, Sherry's trajectory leading up to Russell Queendom? Well, it's interesting because you know since she elected to be like you know what I want the biggest I want to close out the year on possibly the biggest high of my career by main eventing the brand new show in their program that she decided to put her SWA championship up against Konami who they always have good matches. I loved their match at um, all-star dream Cinderella earlier this year. Their league match was also really, really good. Um, And I always, ever since they had that uh, press conference for all uh, All all-star dream Cinderella back in March, I had a newfound appreciation for Konami as a wrestler because I didn't know her entire backstory and how Shuri was one, how long her career is, but how she took Konami under her wing. And they have that very deep, like senpai co high relationship where, you know, she respects, they, they have a mutual respect for each other, but then they're also going to, you know, they're not going to hold back when they have a match. Yeah. So for people who might not know, so Konami was the, the protege of Kana, who, who is of course now known as Asuka in WWE and then and like so and she, I think like uh Asuka and Shuri 
like know each other because they were both in Smash in Tajiri's promotion when he had Smash going around. And and so at some point, like I think I believe Konami was living with Asuka. And then Correct. one day, and then one day she said, Asuka tells her, Hey, I'm moving to America because I just joined the WP. You got to find your own a new place to live. And then what? <laughs> and then you got to find a new mentor too. What? And so that's where Sherry comes in. She kind of basically took took her in and as her mentor. And I think as she gave her place to live for a while. Oh, till probably. She, to, to, till she could find her own place. So so there, there is a deep, very, very deep story between Sherry and and and, um, and Konami. And so I, it kind of makes me also want that story also makes me kind of want to see like Asuka come back and, and have a match with both Konami and Sherry. Because one, in the ring, it'll be fucking awesome. But two, it'll be just like, you can just play, you can just add so much depth to like the video packages and the promos if, if, if she is ever is, is ever going to come back to japan I, I like to see her do like a shot with stardom i feel like when the time comes for her to actually retire like us or whenever she clears like her 20th anniversary of wrestling that she would provided that she could go back to japan to do it i think she would have either an anniversary special or you know a self-produced one because that's what she used to do she used to pr- produce her own shows as well so I think that would be a great opportunity for both of them to show show her how far they've come and you know to put her mind at ease that the women's wrestling of the world is safe in their hands. Right, with with with, with, with Shuri and, and Konami. Correct. I believe Konami's like in her mid twenties. She's still very young. I have a I have a funny story about Konami. Like I remember I saw the 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 G1 climax finals and and one of my my friend Jojo Remy, who's been on like many shows with me and used to co-host Japanese Art Wrestling with me, said to me, "Hey, there's Konami over there." I go, "Oh, really?" And like she and if it if it was her, she was decked out completely in Rapunky 3K <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> big fan, apparently, big fan of of the uh, Rapunky 3K. I mean, she's Konami. a bit of taste then if she's a, a Rapunky 3K fan. Yeah, I, I I would imagine like she's probably more of a Shotanaka fan. Uh, post split of of those two based on the way he wrestles his his and her styles are very similar so it wouldn't surprise me actually like their styles are very similar whether they're baby faces or, or heels because like she has a very strong martial arts background and striking, Correct. striking background as well but um overall what did you think of the the final match between shiri and momo watanabe i really enjoyed it it was a very good match i mean if you're gonna put someone in that final to ensure that some that someone else gets to be the star momo is the person the perfect person to put in there because she can do it all she can she could take a, a paper bag and make give it to give it probably one of the best matches of its entire life and you know sure he doesn't have a bad match so i enjoyed it however i still feel like um her match with takumi earlier in the night was the better of the two matches but she wrestled for over 40 minutes in the span of an hour and a half so you know what <laughs> I'm not gonna like try to you know pick apart the performances because they were both really good, right? And and it's interesting to me like how like Momo Watanabe was pre pre Bushi Road purchase. It's a very pushed person in in the company. She right? has the like, longest she, well world of or sorry wonder of stardom title reign still. Yeah, and like she, you know, like basically Io Shirai when she left Stardom, she passed the torch to Momo, yeah. right? And you thought, and if you're watching Stardom at the time, you're thinking, wow, like there's, like she's it, she's gonna be like on the level, she's gonna be in the same level as as, as Mayu Iwatani, she's gonna be the same level as where you thought Arisa Hoshiki was gonna be, and 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 where Hana Kimura would would, would have been, if, if, you know, like if if circumstances were different, and, yeah. and so like to see her kind of be deep push in the Bushi road era of stardom is, is, you know, I, I think a little sad because I yeah. do feel like it's, 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 it's a body thing. It's because she doesn't have like the grab your idol image that they're going for with people like Julia and, you know, basically U- most Unagi of Sayaka. Unagi Sayaka and most of cosmic angels and most and, of cosmic and, angels. And, yeah. and, and, Dan Damondo is very much in that, in that vein. And so like, I, I'm glad she got this thing, but I feel it's kind of also a, a bone that was kind of thrown to her in yeah. a way to like, you know, uh, you know, one was not going to get the title, any title really anytime soon, like not a single title. So we'll, we'll put her in the finals 
against Shuri, but Shuri's definitely going to win. I, I really think it's 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 something that you know that should be explored maybe by by Momo Tanabe to, to like hmm, you know maybe there are greener pastures out there like where mm. I might not be making the kind of money that you know working for uh, you know promotion that's backed by Bushi Road, you know, but I will probably get a bigger spotlight and and be used utilized a bit better in, yeah. and say like oh i don't know uh i would say marvelous i would say you know uh, seed ring you know nanai takahashi was was you know original was original you know founder of stardom like Correct. she has she has a lot of you know like affection for the the, the people that she trained the momotana yeah. being one of them so yeah. I, I think it would be it would be interesting to see if like momotana would ever leave stardom mm-hmm. because i you know like we'll and we'll talk about someone who announced their departure from stardom as well like yeah where where i i, I think it's a similar situation like and we're talking about Jungle kiona that yeah. i think Jungle kiona left stardom because she saw the writing on the wall like i'm not going to get a push in this company because they're leaning towards younger and uh you know it's a very more more than even before more aesthetic aesthetically based promotion where it's like certain people are going to get pissed because of you know their talents of course like that's not to say no one who's anyone who's getting pushed isn't necessarily talented but there is you know a focus more on you know it's what is it what is the saying they say in wv it's a cosmetic business yeah it's a very visual business and that I think that was the most frustrating thing about the announcement of Jungle Kiona leaving on the 30th was that literally the show that's on today, Saturday the 2nd and you know the 3rd, they're both in Nagoya. And a year ago in Nagoya was when she blew out her knee right after the, the, the dissolution of Tokyo Cyber Squad. So everyone was getting excited thinking, well, maybe it's been a year, you know, she got her surgeries done she should be getting rehabbed. She should be all ready to go. Maybe she'll come back and announce that she's returning. And it was the complete opposite that they, you know, the the company put out the statement. She tweeted about it. And then on her blog, she went into a little bit more detail. And then, you know, she apologized for the sudden announcement because, you know, everyone thought she was getting better, especially when they saw her uh, at Hana Kimura's memorial show. She was in high spirits. She looked healthy. She looked good. She got in the ring during the main event, you know, to, to pose with with uh, Konami and uh, Fukigen this, and it was just like everyone thought it was going to be a matter just a matter of waiting for it. And you know, big events kept coming by. She kept not showing. She kept not coming out. And then in her blog today, she she, you know, she had a, a come to God moment where she's just like, "What am I going to do if I can't wrestle anymore?" And then she found herself looking for jobs, and she's apparently back as early as April of this year, she started working at an advertising agency as the secretary for, for the president of the company. And it focuses on media. And, you know, she's like, I'm going to, I'm preparing to come back to the ring. I don't know which ring I'll be in, but you know, all the wrestling rings of the world are interconnected. So my paths will cross with everyone at some point, but she announced today that she's a freelancer. So she could go to seedling. She could go to marvelous. She could go to Sen- Senjo. She could go wherever she wants. Who knows? She could crop up at like pro wrestling, even the UK. She could come to the States. We don't know. But she seems to be in very high spirits and very optimistic that she still has a future in wrestling. And I think that will make a lot of fans happy. But she also flat out says in her post that people, she knows that people are curious as to the re- specific reasons why she's going, she's chosen to leave stardom. And she also said, I don't think I'll ever publicly talk about it. And that's fine. And I think that's one thing that we as fans need to respect. She said that, you know, it was her choice. She's not changing her mind. If things change in the future, maybe she'll go back. But right now, she she was smart and very collected about it. You know, when Hazuki announced that she was coming back, a lot of people gave pushback. Like, well, when, especially Mayu, when she's like, when you left, you said a lot of very hateful things about the company. And now you're back and you're expecting to just be able to walk in the door and come back to work. And at the press conference they had earlier this week, Hazuki like formally apologized. He's like, I needed what I said at that time was very immature of me because, you know, she's also like only 23 or 24. So when she retired, she was like 21. So yeah. it's, it's interesting that, you know, unfortunately, when it comes to Japanese women's wrestling, the avenues are very limited. 
and your expiration date, quote unquote, in the eyes of various companies, depending on what they're looking for, could come a lot sooner than people would prefer. Well, I mean, thankfully, you know, the the Joshi scene is a lot different now with yes. having so many promotions run by like veteran Joshi wrestlers right. who who's who before when they were at the, you know, quote unquote prime of their careers, they were like, OK, once you hit what I forget what the age is, 27, 28 or something like that. It's Christmas like, cake age. You hit 25 and nobody wants you anymore because it's the day after Christmas. Yeah. yeah Christmas cake, you know, Christmas syndrome. cake age. All- I got told that on my 25th birthday. It made me really sad. <laughs> I heard that. And I was just like, that's such bullshit. I, I certainly don't believe in it, but, um, but like that, that is, that's not the case anymore. You have, you know, uh, you know, Chikisan Nagoya had, I probably fuck up her last name. Nagayo. 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 Yeah. She, she, she runs marvelous. Like she didn't retire when she was 25. Like nope, she might've initially, but then she just like, screw it. I'm coming back. And you know, she did, you know, like, and then you have Oz Academy and you have like tons of promotions. Like I, you know, like Mako Satomura runs Senjo. I think she still probably runs, you know, Sendai girls. I, I think she does indirectly, but because of her NXT UK contract, she, she can't be like, the, like the direct owner, kind of like when WWE per, uh, purchased progress, when they started NXT UK. So I'm pretty sure she's she's still connected because when she goes home, she goes, she goes by there. She checks in on everyone, but. I I, I'm also convinced Miss McMahon doesn't know he, he has her on his roster. So probably not, which is a shame because she should have a WrestleMania match, but that's just me. Yeah, she should not be in NXT UK because like no. maybe, maybe she liked that breakfast she tweeted out like years ago. I mean, every now and then you get a good English breakfast. It can be a game changer. There you go. <laughs> so let, let's talk about also like the upcoming uh, Osaka Dream Cinderella show. Okay. And then the date of this, I, where is it? What is the date for this show? Saturday, October 9th. So that's next week. So Correct. Let, let's look at the, the card from uh, match zero up to match eight. So match zero is a tag match. Lady C and uh, Waka Tsukiyama. A uh, new new member of the Stardom roster from Actress Girls taking on uh, Saki Kashima and Rina from Oedo Tai, and uh, future Stardom Championship match Unagi Sayaka defending against Ruaka from Oedo Tai, uh, high speed championship match Starlight Kid taking on Fukigen Death. You know, like I've I've heard that uh, if Fukigen Death uh, wins, she's gonna do a, a gravure. Book. Correct. She, she she was inspired by Unagi's post uh pinup pictorial in Friday Digest, which is kind of like a soapy pinup grover uh publication. And she said that she wanted like when Konami announced it because Konami was a proxy, because you know, Fukien does isn't the most outspoken death. <laughs> uh she wanted to be on the front page of Tokyo Sports newspaper with just the high speed belt. There you go. Kar- Kari Yoyama. I don't know if Kyrie Oyama has ever done Gravier in her career. She's been Joshi a long time, so she she might have. It's it's a staple of like a lot of uh, people who are in. in yeah, Joshi. I don't think she has though. Um, tag match: Mina Shirakawa and Mai Sakura, also a new signee to Stardom. Uh, from form, of course, they're all members of Cosmic Angels. Will take on Rin Katakawa and Maria from from Marvelous. That should be interesting. And and I, I just want to talk briefly about uh, Wakasukiyama and my Sakura. I like, I, you know, when they, when they announced that they were joining stardom, like I just saw all this pushback from like kind of indie, indie Joshi fans were like, yeah, oh, they're ruining. They're, they're, they're like the WB hoovering up all the indie talent. And it's like, I'm just like, I can see where people might, might say that and, and think that my, my feeling is that, okay, they're from actress girls. They're not making a lot of money. And if you have a chance to want if you want to do this full time, there's like you know very few yeah. avenues. It's like Correct. either it's either stardom, it's either Tokyo Joshi, you know, pro wrestling, or or it's like doing freelance and yeah. like you know like a lot of people who are doing freelance they they have other jobs. It's not their full time job. Like, but if you work for stardom or or TJBW, it's it's a chance to be a full time wrestler and not have to worry about where you know how you're going to pay the rent and 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 you know buy groceries and things like that yeah. so i i i don't have a problem with people jumping from like a you know an indie that does maybe one show like or two shows a month at corican and like 
they don't sell out. I've been to an actress girl show and it wasn't sold out at all, you know? And so, and you know, you got to hustle to make extra money doing, the, exactly. the, 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 you know, selling your, your t-shirts and your, 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 your Polaroids and all that stuff. Like, and this is less, less of that. Like if you, if you're working for stars, so I like, so my Sakura and, you know, Wakasuki, I, I have, Hey, good for you. And hey, listen, if you're a big company, you have the, the money to hire people. Okay. Go hire people. Like, I don't think they should be hiring everyone. I wouldn't want to see that. Yeah. But like these two were not stars. We're not made of vendors and actress girls or anything like that. And, and so like, Hey, you know, they, you know, Bushi road, Rossi Ogawa, whoever thought, Hey, they're, they're a good fit for our company. And, and like, we can build them from the ground up. So there you yeah. go. That's why they're in startup. I feel. Well, and even, even like at the press conference, you know, Lady C and Awaka Tsukiyama are tagging together and they're, they're in the middle of their statement at the press conference. And Waka calls out Tam Nakano and, this, and Cosmic Angels and begs to be added to their group. And it made this for this really weird dynamic because Lady C is like, bro, we got like tagged together in like less than 10 days. What are you doing? Can you wait to declare that you want to be in Cosmic Angels until we're done? So now, now Cosmic Angels has five members and I feel like they're trying, they're, start, they're starting to work on balancing out all the factions. So there's even like, not even, but equal numbers. So now, you know, Donna Damundo has five people. Cosmic Angels now has five people. Oedo Tai, they've got six, I think, but that's only because uh, Natsuko is out injured. And then they removed uh, Sumire Natsu from, because, you know, she's a freelancer. They removed her profile from the Oedo Tai section. And yeah, you know, and- H- Hazuki's coming back, and the, she, her thing was that she wanted to have her own group of stardom born people. So I feel like Stars is going to get gutted again. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen to Queen's Quest? You know, if Momo has to keep get, taking a back seat to, you know, Saya Kamatani and Utami Hayashishita, who knows? Momo could end up leaving Queen's Quest at this rate. I, I would love to see like Queen's Quest and like stars get decimated, to be honest with you. I like to see just like a shakeup. Like, I, I think, you know, I, I, I think Oedo Tai is way past the expiry date. I, I like they can keep the I group. You that. just change, change the name because it had, it has no resemblance to its original makeup or, or any kind of lineage. In, yeah, I, I and feel. Especially when they're bringing Hazuki back and she's intentionally said that she's not joining Oedo Tai, that she wants to start her own faction. Right. Like I think her, Momo, and Azumi, like the original members of Queen Quest, should just break off, yeah, and then just end Queen's Quest, and then like, and maybe you know some other Trueborns, you know, the Stardom system can can can, can round out two more members. So you have a group of five, yeah. But but uh, you know, get back to to the show, the card trios tag match, uh, Donald Domundo, Micah, Himeka, Natsupoi take on. Queen's Quest, Momo Tanabe, Azumi, and Saya Kamitani. That should be fun. It's a, it's uh, well, a- the stakes for that match might be getting increased after the Nagoya show tonight because Cosmic Angels is defending their Artists of Stardom titles against Donna Del Mundo, uh, Micah, Himeka, and Natsupoi. And of their d- previous title defenses, that's the only match that has a time limit draw. So is your prediction Donna Del Mundo will get to the, the I Artists believe- titles? they're getting the titles and they're taking it for to make that to make the queen's quest match to give it stakes because it's one of the only matches on the card that literally has no stakes well i i, I would also think that you know like because tam has the wonder title and and uh, uh unaki you know unagi has the uh the features title like you don't really need poor, poor mina shirakana was gonna be eating that pin because she's the uh. only not double champion in cosmic angels at the moment Ah, it's okay. She she she's uh she's she she's can bounce the, back. She'll be she, fine. She's got the the English commentary gig, right? So <laughs> she did really well. I was very proud of her. Yeah, I heard a lot of stories about that. Like someone uh, who works in Japan as a as as a commentator was DMing me about like certain things. I can't I can't go beyond that. I'll tell of you course, off. I'll, I'll tell you off the air. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds juicy. Uh, reunion of destiny Hazuki's return from retirement match uh Hazuki versus Koguma who also returned recently from, from her 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 absence from 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 stardom from wrestling so that's going to be interesting I feel like there's going to be an alliance formed out of this yeah so 
uh, special singles match, Shuri versus Konami. That should be amazing. I, I look forward yes. to seeing that. Uh, Wonder of Stardom Championship, Tom Nakano, the current champion versus Mayu Iwatani. Wow. That's, 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 I feel that's kind of years in the making, you know? Yes. And, and, and I, I can see Mayu being the one to end Tom's, Tom's reign here. Yeah. The interesting thing about that match is that, you know, Mayu's been having this narrative that, you know, Tam set up Cosmic Angels behind her back and that, you know, we were, you know, they, they, she had plans for them to do so much more together in stars before she went and launched, launched Cosmic Angels. But Tam's like, I never said that I was going to like stick around as long as I did. And she, cause you know, she originally wasn't in stars. She went, I think she was in a way to tie at first. So it's, it's one of those things where they see something in Tam and that's good, but it's also going to be, I can, I can tell that if Mayu doesn't take the belt from her, that it's going to possibly cause the, the final nail in the coffin for stars with her, like her, believing in her as a leader. So we could possibly have a scenario where Mayu Iwatani ends up losing a faction for the first time in a very long time. She, could, she, can she, join, she, uh, she can join Cosmic Angels. <laughs> she, can, she can join a way to tie. I, 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 I don't want to see that. I'll be honest with you. I, <laughs> well, I don't want to see, I don't want to see dark side Mayu Iwatani. You don't see it. Well, I mean, it worked for Starlight Kid. She's, she's thriving right now. I, I was actually glad when she had to join and I thought, okay, she just, she embraces being healed. Like, cause I think that's, that's for her. It was like the perfect opportunity to show, like, she's not just this rookie kid, you know? And like, it's, there's a side to her like, oh, she's a good promo. Oh, she can do like some dastardly things and not just be like the goody goody two shoes, you know, like that, that's been her image all of her career up until now. And we'll see. That that's the interesting thing because if you draw the parallel to other wrestlers in the last year or so that have turned heel after being either a tweener or a babyface, Starlight Kid's the one who got it right, knocked it out of the park. Like if you were to compare, like Show doing very well with it, Evil mm, not as much as we would like to have hoped for. But I don't know what I don't know what lightning in a bottle Starlight Kid caught, but like she's. I feel like she's going to be one of the bigger players coming up. Oh, I, I mean, like unknown whether or not, you know, when Natsuko is coming back. So she's 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 becoming more and more a front person for Oedo Tai. I, I think just with Starlight Kid, it's like she she's always had the, the you know, she's always been pegged. I think her and Azumi, because they're generational yeah. you know, rivals and they're they're part of the same generation. They they're the two that like you know. Ogawa before Bushi Road and Bushi Road now look at those two and think these this is our future main eventers in the next I don't know five years maybe sooner. yeah but like that that's where they're gonna place a lot of their you know put that's those are the baskets they're gonna put a lot of their eggs in you know for the future of of like leading the company as far as being like main eventers and things like that it's a zoomy and it's start like kid yeah but like again I, I I don't know I just I I I don't know what would happen I do think. I'm going to predict my time is going to beat Tom. Like I, I can't see anyone else beating her for that, for that belt. And I think it does not right I, now. No, I think it would be good because I think it does free up Tom not going to own to challenge for the red belt. Yeah. So, and after, I think after, after sure he does the, uh, achieves the impossible dream. That's that's right. Um, and, and that brings us to the, the main event, the world of starting championship match, Tommy Hashishida defending against Takumi Iroha of Marvelous. And, and what's your prediction for this match, Karen? I think it's going to be an outstanding match, but the person that needs to be walking into queendom with the belt needs to be Utami because that's the person Shuri hasn't been able to beat. I, I, I agree with you. But I can also see them maybe <laughs> holding that off by having Aroha win the title. Oh. And then and then, you know, Shuri beats her. And then you set up like a bigger show down the line in 2022. The- so here's a question for you. They have a they have the goddesses tag league. Does that usually happen in October, November time of year, or is that earlier in the year? I cannot say with certainty because like most tag leagues 
outside of all Japan, I don't pay attention to. Okay. Well, it's only because, you know, it's interesting because they haven't said, given an update on Julia's status. So if, for example, if she's not going to be able to, if they plan on having a tag league, say in November, then of course, you know, they could always put Utami back with Saya Kamitani and they could reunite Aphrodite and do the tag thing. So it would I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad either way if Takumi wins the bell or if Utami retains. But it, it's just one of those things like I'm not very familiar with the rest of what they've got scheduled for the end of the year. Because they, you know, like most Japanese promotions, they play it very close to the vest about what main events they're going to have until I, closer to the date. I, I just don't see it like that that tournament playing a, a big factor in how like the you know, like how future shows and who's going to be in main event slots, you know, like, I don't, I don't think it's really that, that big of a factor. Um, like, so I, I, you know, I just think that, you know, that's a, that's a match they they've done like, you know, twice already, like yeah. Shiri versus Utami, they've already done it twice. And I feel like, you know, yeah, the, 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 the December show, the, the, you know, start dream queendom on December 29th. It's, it's perfect time. It's, it's the best, possible place to to like crown shiri because that, that's yeah. what i think should be the outcome i think shiri should get the title absolutely um but i can also see them thinking let's squirm it let's do a naito right <laughs> you oh, think she's no, gonna win? don't make her a naito <laughs> no, no no not not shiri's and not naito but like you're gonna <laughs> you to aroha is gonna be the spoiler and she's gonna get the belt because i also think like you know there's a there's like some concessions you have to give to Marvelous for like lending out Roja to, yeah. to, to stardom. Like they get a lot of benefit because, Oh, a lot of people are exposed to, to Kumi Roja and they're like, Oh, she's not stardom, you know, contract wrestler. Oh, she's from Marvelous. I'm going to follow her. I like her wrestling. I'm going to go follow her and watch Marvelous. That's what you would hope is the effect of like sharing talent is. But um, I do think, you know, it, it would be a good thing for, for Roja to be, the, the world of stardom champion like and i think if even you as have, a transitional champion yeah i think it, it, it I, I don't think it's like it's, if it's on her cv it's great yeah. for her it's great for yeah, marvelous of course. oh i uh, agree and, and then like you you have the match because like that's also a money match roha versus shuri you know oh, absolutely re- so i i can see it going either you know tommy retains and, and goes to you know december 29th against shuri and they have the match or you know aroha wins Throws a little monkey wrench in people's expectations. She has a match. She drops the belt to Shuri. And then the next time Utami and Shuri have a match, it's for it's for Shuri's World of Stardom title. And I, I think that would be a very interesting way of booking it. And if I was if I was a booker of stardom, I would be very, very tempted to do that. I would co-sign on that one. Because I you other, sold me on it. Well, the other big show you could do is like a return to like Budokan Hall next year, right? Yeah. So, for the anniversary show for the anniversary show and like that to me is like their their that's more like the wrestle kingdom to me like i i as much as i you know have enjoyed <laughs> quote unquote enjoyed being in in sumo hall over the years i yeah i think budokan is such a much better venue and it's, it's and it, it, I, th- I do believe it holds more people yeah so, um i i if you if you have a show planned there which i assume they do that, yep. that another their anniversary show then you do the rematch with like the third, you know, the third match is at Budokan, not necessarily Ryugoku Koko Gikan. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we, we touched on a lot of things. Anything else we want to talk about with regards to stardom? Uh, I, not really. I mean, I'll be, I'll be doing the report for that show. And then I will be doing the Kawasaki and Tokyo Super Wars in November. And then I will be doing Ryo Goku Dream uh, Queendom's review at the end of the year. There you that's go. What, that's that's what my publication schedule for Post is going to be. That's awesome. So 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 glad you're 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 official member of the of the team here, Karen. It, it was weird because I did two podcasts earlier this week, and they're like, "Can we introduce you as Karen Peterson from Post Wrestling?" And I'm like, "I've got like one article, but I've been told it's okay, so it's it, it's still like I'm still getting used to it." But Wait, like, you had to clear. You had to clear this with. Uh, I I emailed the powers that be. And I'm like, is it okay if they introduce me like that? They're like, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm like, okay. 
<laughs> so many people are jealous right now. Like, like, uh, are they? like, oh yeah, I, for sure. Seriously. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's still new and weird to me. So it's, it doesn't feel real. I guess it, it'll feel real when I, I guess I get more content posted on the site. No, it'll be it's great. I'm I'm sure you're you're gonna get an an invite from uh from one of the other hosts to to be be on another show as well. You know. Oh, all right. I That's mean, what I'm I down. feel. I'm not. I didn't hear anything. I'm just like that's how it usually goes. Uh, oh, we should have we should have that you know so and so on the show because they're doing a lot of content for the website or well, or what have you. And you've been on the show twice. That, and I mean, you know. I, I do love enjoying doing the post pro res podcast with you. So there you uh, go. I, my, <laughs> My dog apparently is writing commentary as well. She she enjoys being on this podcast as well, of course. Yeah, yes, she's like, she's like, can I get on the mic? No, you can't. But but, but staying within the the Bushi Road sphere, let's move on to New Japan for wrestling. We're in the middle of of the G one, and and the the big news really so far here it has to be that mm-hmm. Tetsuya Naito. Oh, the, your dog Zelda is uh, maybe anticipated me saying Naito. Maybe not a fan. Yeah, she she's not happy about Naito's knees being put in the bin with everybody's brackets. So he damaged the medial collateral ligament and meniscus in his left knee and has withdrawn from the G1 climax. And if you know anything about Tetsuya Naito, for him to actually say, "I can't even cut through this. I my knees are so fucked up. I have to not be at these shows." Like that's that's it's serious. I'm really worried about this man's future. Yeah, I remember there was a, like they did a special called The Professional. Uh, it was like a documentary by NHK on him a few years ago. And they talked about his knees and he's like, I know that they're on, they're on borrowed time, but he wasn't going to you know, tr- change the way he wrestles as a result of it because he wants to do as much as he can in his own style. But I think Destino and Tranquilo are a bit tired now. So it, he might be getting a wake up call that he can't be the workaholic he usually is mm. anymore. Well, I mean, I was listening to John Wade on one of their reviews talking about this. And one of the points that, that I didn't really think about until I heard them talk about it was that it's, it's not so much the, the wins that he, that he has to give up. It's the losses that he has to give up because like any loss that he suffered was going to be a big benefit to whoever beat him. Correct. And so like who, who, like who, like thinking about like the, the loss of kind of the, uh, the, the, the elevation, the rub, so, so to speak, like that not being able to beat Naito in this tournament, yeah. you know, those people were going to be like really screwed. I, I, I don't know, like that he was in a block. So who, who would have, who would have had a good, you know, good chance. Like you, you lost the Shingo match, right? The LIJ yeah. versus LIJ match with Shingo. That's a, that's, 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 I think that's a huge loss. And I, I, I really think like there's a good chance that Shingo would have beat him. Yeah. He got even a bigger rub, you know? Um, I'm well, going to say Yujiro was in the same block and Yujiro was really looking forward to that match. I'm sure he was. It's like, hey, no limit reunion in exactly. the ring. And I don't know if Tetsuya Naito was looking forward to that rematch, but I'm sure Yujiro was. But I think Great Okan would have had a very, very good chance of getting the rub from Naito. Correct. And, and because he's 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 been outstanding. I, I watched the match. I haven't kept up with all the G1. I did I did see several people whose opinions I trust, Karen, talk mm-hmm. about this is a great match. You wouldn't you're gonna change your minds about the great Okan and like I thought did I, you watch I, his match with Saber? I did. I loved oh, it. So good. <laughs> I loved it. I thought this is like I I I don't hate the character. I don't like, you know, I don't hate the look or anything like that. I I don't think leaning into it, like if you balance it with actually being a good fucking wrestler, that's great. Like I don't mind yeah. a character as long as there's some wrestling behind it. So to see that side of him, it was really, really cool. And I like hope he like, you know, like heard enough praise from it. Where he's like, mm, okay, I'm going to incorporate a little bit more of this into my matches, not just save it for like people like like ZSJ. So it, it'd be interesting. I, I do think you know there there is something to be said about uh, you know Great Okan getting a bigger push. Apparently, you know, New Japan has big plans mm-hmm. for him, and and they 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 he's like been earmarked, you know, or or you know like you know f- to be to be a main event player down the future. I I don't see it right now. But who knows if he has more matches like this? And 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 really, what I what I really loved about that match, besides like the, him showing off his technical prowess, was the fact that he carried himself like a star 
in in Correct. that in that match. I agree and, completely. And, and like he wasn't like pushed around by being in the in, a, in the ring with 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 Zach. So he he rose to Zach's level. And like Zach Saber Jr. is on a certain level in New Japan. And I think like he's acquitted himself really well this year um mm-hmm. with dangerous techers but also like in this g1 so far like geez like he's doing very very well like i don't know if he's gonna win the entire thing but i can see him getting into like the the block finals yeah you know and, and getting the rub that way like i i think there are worse ideas than than put, pushing zach saber jr to a level that that like will osprey or jay white are on i i think it wouldn't be the worst idea to like actually give their spots to him I find that of the three of them, Zach's the one who's bided his time because he was here. He was, you know, in he had won the New Japan Cup a few years ago. And since then, he hasn't had a singles. You know, he never held the IC title. He never held, to my knowledge, I don't think he's held the Never title. He had the Rev Pro title, which is, you know, looks like the, the, uh, the never title, but the, the, you mean the, the I, IWGP United Kingdom title? <laughs> That's, what I, call, <laughs> that's what I call the Rev title, Rev Pro title. And they, they didn't let him challenge for the U.S. Ch- championship, so it's one of those things where it's like, I wouldn't be mad if Zach could eventually become a singles champion again, especially after the match he had with Shingo and the way he conducts himself and the promos he cuts. I. He, I think he's finally ready for it. I mean, in the ring, he's he is very much a strong style wrestler. Um, Osprey is is like a great wrestler. I don't think he carries himself like a main eventer. That's mm. my person. I know a lot of people who think he does. I don't, I don't feel that way. I think his promos are terrible. Like this, this character or not, not character that he's playing. Yeah, is, is, is just so cringy and like so. Unbecoming. It's not my cup of tea. Why well, I, I just don't feel it, it. It doesn't scream main event to me. Like just an object in a, from objective point of view yeah. for, for upper mid card maybe, but not company champion. And and I, you know, it's no secret. Like I never thought Jay White should have been pushed to the level that he has, and and I don't think he's lived up to the promise of the push that he was given. Um. And I think he's actually a much better American television wrestler. I think his his gimmick fits way more there than it does in New Japan. Um, but I think Zack Sabre Jr. is the perfect wrestler in terms of his persona and his in-ring style to be a New Japan wrestler, like a throwback New Japan wrestler, like throwback to the days of Fujinami and into the days of like, you know, Shinya Hashimoto and, and Yuji Nagata, like that kind of a wrestler. And I think you know, he's, he, he has a chance to break away from Suzuki gun. Cause like, that's the other thing I would like to see is him break away from them. And Hey, you know what? Like, I think there's something to the, to, to the idea that, that, you know, there's some like shooty elements to like, you know, Osprey leaving New Japan <laughs> when he did. And, mm. and there's some, you know what, take, take, take the United empire in Japan away from him and give it to Zach Saber Jr. Cause that, that Ooh. would be, that would fit so much better. Like him, an RA, <laughs> Cobb and Okan, that would make I, a so much better faction, I feel. I've never thought of it that way. Oh, WH. Can they throw Gabe Kidd in there too? You can you can yeah, he can be his like, you know, his protege. Sure, oh. why not? But I don't think Gabe Gabriel Kidd with Osprey would be a very good. No, 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 no. But with Zack Saber Jr. Yeah. Ooh, yes, please. I think him being a Suzuki gun is, is doing him no favors. Like as long as like, it's called Suzuki gun, he's, he's just going to be in the same position. He has to break out on his own. Like what they did with Osprey, they should, they should give the same push to Zach Saber yeah. Jr. I, I think they look at him like, you know, we can't trust Osprey. He's too emotionally unstable. Um, this is one of the, the, the issues I had with, um, the, the the current situation with the I'm the real world champion, I'm the world champion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is that, you know, other wrestlers that had gotten injured, they are minimum, they issued a statement, they surrendered the belt, whether it was at a show or they went to the company office. Oh, sorry, I just got distracted. <laughs> um, they did something to show the company that they respected the title enough to pass it back 
for the betterment of the company. And the, the way that they've done it now is that they've forced themselves into this situation where you have two people with the same belt and they're just not, I don't know. It's like, I feel like at some point, if, if he was able to get better in four months and be able to wrestle the best way to prove that you're the real world champion, wrestle the G1, win the G1 and be like, all right, you, me, Tokyo Dome, let's do it. But that's not what we're getting. It's, it's going to be, I'm in the U S or the U and, or the UK at the same time. And then it's going to be, does he just stroll into the Tokyo Dome and be like, all right, let's have our match mate. Like, I don't, I don't know what the end game for Osprey is. You know, Shingo's over here wrestling Tanahashi and Ibushi. Who's who's Osprey wrestling to defend well, the heavyweight world heavyweight championship? He's wrestling Carl Fredericks. Uh, he's wrestling Carl Fredericks and, and and Alex Coughlin. Come on, like you know, there's you know, Carl Fredericks, the next great hope of of. He's not, by the way, just so people really and understand. It's, a, it's not guy, a knock on them. No, it, I'm it's, totally knocking Carl Fredericks. They're just Fredericks. not Tanahashi or Ibushi. He's, you know, not I'm totally anyways. knocking Carl Fredericks. People are like, he's he's going to be a big, I don't think he's going to be a big star. I think he's hit his plateau, to be honest with you. But um, with Osprey, I think it's just like, oh, okay, we're going to have, he's going to be one of the knights of the of the Russell Kingdom because like Russell Kingdom's three knights coming up this, this coming January. He's going to be one of them. They're just going to bring him back. But I, it's going to be curious what, his future is in the company after after that because I don't think they'll ever trust him with the title ever again. Um, and yeah, it'll be interesting. Like, so I, you know what, Zach Saber Jr. Who knows with Naito out, maybe his his prospects of be winning winning the G one and going into Wrestle Kingdom have uh, gone up. Who knows? But um, yeah, let's talk about the, the the standing so far. Oh, let me let me get your your top three matches so far at the G1, Karen, before oh, we get God, to the Oh, God, off the top of my head? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Let's see. Let's, oh. You would ask me that. Well, Sa- Saber Ocon, definitely. Uh, I, it, it, it might not be on everyone's radar or not, but I enjoyed Kenta versus Yujiro. Because going into that match, I was expecting them to do the normal bullet club shenanigans. You lay down. No, you lay down. And it kind of started out with that, with Kenta being like, you know, he, he's, he's imploring to Yujiro. He's like, we're friends, right? We're not supposed to be fighting like this. And Yujiro was like, he's like, but I need the win more. So, but they actually had a good match and I really enjoyed it. Oh, there you go. Okay. And number um, three. <sighs> I'm, I'm going to put. Uh, pretty much any anyone that's wrestled Jeff Cobb because Jeff Cobb is just if Jeff Cobb doesn't win B block, it's gonna have to be Okada. That's my final final answer on that because Jeff okay. Cobb's just doing an outstanding job. I I I like I have one one complaint is that like he he gave too much to Marshmallow Man in in the first night of yeah. the B block, and I'm like, hey, listen, he should have destroyed this jobber. <laughs> if people don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Chase Owens. The melted marshmallow man. He, this guy, does not look like a star. And Jeff Cobb should be the protected project of this company. <laughs> he should have destroyed this guy in two minutes. the The fact that it went more than five minutes was just a travesty, in my opinion. So I gave it a very, you know, I gave like two, two, two stars on the grapple app. But yeah, any, I, I think you know, Cobb is definitely winning B block. Like it's either, like you said, it's either him or Okada. I'm, I'm hoping it's Cobb. Okada doesn't need it. He can, he can doesn't also, need it. He doesn't fucking need it. It's not, you know, it's not the time to do it. Like during this ongoing pandemic still, like he can save him and just give Cobb the push and get, get Cobb on that level. Cause you need, you need someone like him to, to fill out this roster in, 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 on that level, in my opinion. Well, and also because, you know, Jeff has been over there the entire time. He could have, easily been one of the guys to come back and you know bounce back and forth in between you know the states and japan but jeff's just been over there and you know he when he when he came into the company a couple of years ago you know he, he he's been in the g1 before he's not had this kind of run in the g1 and i feel like jeff is decorated enough prior to his time in new japan that now is the time again as we talked about previously you and i minting new stars jeff cobb 
you could just like th- take Shingo's belt and throw it on him, and boom, you have your next big Gaijin bad boy in Jeff Cobb. Definitely, He's like, like him and Zach, both of them. But it's one of those things like if if either of them don't go to the finals, then what are they doing? Because this is it's a perfect opportunity for them to make a new top Gaijin star or two. Or two. I mean, oh. Zach's Zach's doing it enough on his own. He's just, he's just taking limbs from people and just ruining everything. Well, let's talk about eight block standings at the top. We have Zach Sabre Jr. four and zero record, eight points. Uh, next after him is Great Okan four and one record, eight points. Kota Ibushi with a three and two record. He sits at six points. Toru Yana, <laughs> it's six points. <laughs> Same record as Ibushi. There you go. Good old God bless you, Toru Yano. <laughs> Shingo Takaki. <laughs> Three and one record. Six you can't points. even say that with a straight face. I uh, like, hey, <laughs> like I, I think the you know the 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 Toriano experiment has has run its course long, long time ago. But hey, we're still we're still talking about him in these fucking G ones. <laughs> like, like, anyways, Kenta three and two record, six points. Yujiro Takashi at two and two record, he has four points. Uh, Tomohiro Ishii two and three record. How does Yujiro Takahashi have a better record than Tomohiro Ishii? Yeah, four points. And at the bottom, Tangaloa, two points. You know, I, here, here's the thing I, about Tangaloa, Karen. Like, I really think he would benefit. If he's going to stay in the tag team with, with, with Tamatanga, then they should go somewhere else because it's really fucking stale in New Japan. But if he's going to stay, you should, you should, you know, it wouldn't be the worst idea to give him a singles push. See, here's the thing that I'm wondering is that with you know, the, the, the increasing everyone's worried that evil and Jay are going to have their bullet club breakdown very, very in the near future. I wouldn't be mad if Tama Tonga and Tongaloa, you know, they've, they've done it all in the tag division. There's nothing left for them in the tag division. They could easily both have successful singles careers, whether it's, you know, in the never division or as the U S champion, or, you know, you know, nobody wants the second, the quote unquote second best belt, but I feel like they could both, they're finally confident enough and it shows between how they've how with, with Thomas growth in the past couple of years, you know, he his previous G1 with kind of like a throwaway attempt. He didn't care. And now they're both taking it very serious. They're, you know, they're taking, they're not underestimating any of their opponents. They're, you know, breaking yield kayfabe and, you know, going on Instagram live and talking about how thankful they are and how, you know, they wish they would wrestle better. And they're being very analytical towards their wrestling and for me, you know, I'm rah, 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 all the baby faces, but now I'm in a point where I'm cheering for br- anyone it heel face. It doesn't matter. Like, I just want people to, to succeed. And Tongaloa in particular is just, he's just so thankful to finally be able to be given that platform to be included in the G1 that I was worried that he was really nervous at the beginning, but he's just, he looks like he's genuinely loving this opportunity to prove that he's not just a tag wrestler. And the same thing with Tama. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, for me, I'm always going to be, I, I'm going to be a little higher on Tangaloa than I am Tama Tonga. But uh, like, I don't disagree. Like, I think, you know, like you, you, there's nothing to do for either of them in the tag division. You might as well just have them go separate ways, not feuding against each other, but like just go separate ways and, and do tag single stuff. Yeah. But but let, let's move on. B block standings, Jeff Cobb, four and a record, eight points uh, up there with him. Cause he's got Okada. Four and a record, eight points. Uh, fall, trailing behind those two, Hiroshi Tanahashi, three and one record, six points. Evil, three and one record. Uh, he's still, but he's got four points. I forget what had was that maybe a typo there that I cut and paste from the New Japan site. So Sonata, two and two record, four points. Taichi, uh, two and two record, four points. Not doing as well as tag partner Zach. Uh, Tamatanga, one and three record, two points. Uh, it might be another typo there uh yoshihashi one and three record two points oh it's two points for each win sorry yeah, yeah never mind uh chase owens zero and four record zero points sounds about right and hiroki goto zero and four record zero points that's not doesn't sit well with me yeah i i, I don't feel like Hiro, hiroki goto should be at the bottom of any block he should bare minimum have at least two points by now i i've said this Till I when I will say it till I'm blue in the face. He should go to another company. <laughs> I know he won't, but he should. Yeah. He he like I I think there's something to be said about being a big fish in a smaller pond. Yeah. Like I think if he went to all Japan, he, he would oh, I pushed. would not be I would not be mad about that. Or or even Noah. Oh, he would be pushed to the moon in Noah. 
right? That's what I'm saying. He's he's got the he's the right age to be. Pushed the <laughs> no. He's over forty, so he's in the right age. Yeah, perfect, perfect. But he 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 has so much to give, and like I I just like look at zero points after four matches. It's that's ridiculous. It makes me sad. It's it's ridiculous. Goto deserves better. He does. He he said no. I love New Japan. I I remember someone's asked him that. Like, why don't you go to somewhere else? Like, no, I love New Japan. I quote tweeted. I said, if only they loved you back as much. Oh no, that hurts. That hurts my heart. I didn't quote tweet him. Actually, maybe just screen. I, I don't do that. I don't like you know you know. He could have misconstrued as insult to him, but yeah, I I, I think I probably screenshotted that and just put it out as like, if only they loved you as much as you love them. Aww. But uh, let's get some some like uh, like uh, like other notes here. Uh, an interesting post show uh, interview. Zach Saber Jr. made a, 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 an acknowledgement of Brian Danielson talking about him, saying, "Hey, I want my Wrestling Observer Best Technical Wrestler Award back from him because he's yeah. been winning it, even though it's named after me." So, and then you know, you know, Zach said, "Hey, after he beat Shika Takagi, he said that's the dragon, Japanese dragon done. I wonder where the American dragon is." And and what what's your feeling about Brian Danielson making a return? To, to, to New Japan Pro Wrestling because he has been the IWGP Junior Tag Champion in that company. Oh, well then. I mean, I don't see them putting Dan, uh, Brian Danielson in the best of the Super Juniors anytime soon. But if what I found interesting was that they were talking that the match that they originally had was in England. I wouldn't be mad if they had that match at Rev Pro, honestly. Yeah, I think I, neither would Andy Quinlan. I'm sure he'd be like, yes, <laughs> oh yeah, let me get that match. Oh my god! But but yeah, like you know, it's you kind know. of neutral territory because it's not New Japan proper. But I remember someone saying that AEW is playing a UK tour sometime soon, and that would be. I mean, I guess they would probably rather have it like on a, like on AEW big platform, but I feel that it would be better in a Rev Pro ring because Rev Pro, you know, or if they find another indie promotion in the uk well, what's left of their scene to have it oh they just go to like the you know the camps <laughs> go go back to I, we, we, like you know all-star wrestling yeah and and do it at the the, the summer camps uh you know in, in that part that kind of the, that culture of the that part of the british wrestling culture um i i think it'll be done on new japan if they do it i don't i don't see Japan letting I wouldn't be mad Saber, at it. I mean, Saber Junior going to to AW. I don't. I don't. I'd just be surprised if that happened. Yeah. Um. Speaking of like you know people possibly coming in to New Japan, uh, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis, uh, collectively known as Aussie Open, uh, aligned with Osprey on uh, the September nineteenth, uh, you know, Rev Pro show at your call, and uh, they they joined the United Empire. Also, in a lesser note, uh, TJP also joined the United Empire, but no, no, I'm sure no one cares about that. Um, uh, but yeah, of all when, the picks, all the, of all the picks I had for the junior spot in the United Empire, TJP was not on my radar at all. I had three choices. He was not among my three choices. You know, you know, my theory is is like Osprey probably had some say in it and said, "Who's who's more problematic than me potentially?" Oh, no. TJ Perkins, there you go. But what 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 are your thoughts about uh, Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis possibly coming to Japan proper and and, and bolstering up those uh, New Japan tag ranks? When I first started watching uh, British wrestling back in 2016, I watched Rev Pro Progress and I really enjoyed watching Mark Davis and Kyle Fletcher wrestle. Uh, when they came here to the United States for WrestleMania Week in 2019, the main event for Rev Pro that night because they had to flip the card around to accommodate Tanahashi's schedule. The main event was Rapongi 3K versus Aussie Open. So, and then at Royal Quest, Aussie Open had a match against GOD. So I've always had a soft spot for Aussie Open and being like, maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe one day. And then I guess Mark Davis blew out his knee. They went back to Australia. Lockdown happened. And they finally got, they finally escaped back to the UK. <laughs> there is no other tag team more deserving than the pair of them. And I think that should they come to New, uh, Japan for World Tag League, they could have a very successful World Tag League. Oh, definitely. I think if they're you know part of the United Empire, then and if they're accept embraced by the the Japanese base members, like oh, the, like, the, the, ja- the Japanese fans are going to love them. They are v- very tall, very handsome men from Australia. <laughs> there you go. Like uh, the shades of a uh, TMDK 
back when they oh, were God, caressing I, Noah. I miss them. I miss them so much. But the Seeking World Tag League, uh, that's happening this coming November, along with Best of Super Juniors. It's going to be a, a combined tour. Uh, let's let's just go through. There's no lineups, no 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 participants listed, but they, they have released uh, the full schedule. So I'm, we're going to and they're, they're alternating dates. So November 13th, everything kicks off. BOSJ. Uh, in Corican Hall, then November 14th, World Tag League in Corican Hall. Uh, November 15th, Corican Hall, BOSJ. So November 17th, by the way, just so everyone knows, it's it's alternating days. So November, November 17th in Toyama Techno Hall, West Hall is the World Tag League. The 28th in Nagao Athletic Park Gymnasium. Uh, the November, wait a second, November 19th is the next World Tag League. Sorry, uh, Matsu, Matsumoto. Matsumo Todaria. Matsumo Todaira. There you go. Sorry. I haven't been in Japan for a year. I haven't spoken Japanese in a year. Regional Park Gymnasium, <laughs> uh, November 23rd in Colts, Kawasaki. Great name for a venue, by the way. Uh, and November 21st, I got these dates wrong. I, I copy and pasted this from New Japan site. So there, there's something it's wrong prob- on there. In the probably site. Nagawa Athletic Park is probably November 18th. Maybe. There you go. Okay. Uh, you know what? Just I'm just gonna do this best of super juniors from the from from November 21st, IC Professional Gymnasium, 24th, Corican Hall, 27th, Fujisawa City, uh Akibadai Cultural Gymnasium, 29th in Corican Hall, moving into December in gymnasium of uh Tokorozawa Citizen Main Arena. Is that in Osaka? Uh I think it's Osaka Os- Osaka adjacent. Right. That's where it took us. No, I'm thinking of ta- Takaza. You're thinking of the Takarakaza? Yeah, different never place. Mind. Never mind. They, Anyways. They, are not, they are not having it in an all women's theater hall. I, I almost went to one of those shows and I regret not going, by the way. Same. <laughs> Uh, December 5th in Twin Mese in Shizuoka. I've been there because I, I lived in the Shizuoka prefecture. Uh, December 8th in uh, Yawa Tahama Citizen Sports Center. And December 11th in Aquilir Ak- Himeji. Oh, Himeji's a nice place. I, I went to I Himeji love Castle. Himeji. It's a good, it's a good, good place. Nice place. Yeah, it's a very nice city. Uh, okay, World Tag League uh, from the 28th, November 28th in Toganai Arena, the 30th in Corican Hall, December 2nd in Wing Hut uh, Kasukabe. Is that is that like a chicken wing place? I don't know, but <laughs> very curious to know what a wing, what Wing Hut Kasukabe entails. I, uh, I, uh, if you want to go. Go Google that while I read the rest of these things. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, December 4th in uh, IMSA Yamanashi. Yamanashi is great. Have you ever been to Yamanashi? Uh, I have not. It's very Inaka, which by the way means like I rural. Do, I do love some Inaka. I, I went there just to go to a, a, a bar like a pub there because like in, in Nubazu, there's a, there's a, a brewery called um, Baird Beer and they have, and they own their own bars called the tap room, but they sell a franchise. So there's like two, there's two in Tokyo. There's one in, in Yokohama. There's two in the Shizuka prefecture, including in my hometown of, of Numazu. And then there was one in Yamanashi. And I said, I said to two of my friends, let's do a road trip. Let's go to Yamanashi. We just went there to just stay, stay the night and go to this bar. <laughs> okay, this one. So here, here's an update for you. It's not wing hut. It's wing hat. H A T, and I think it's because the roof kind of looks like it has wings on it, but it's not anything particularly outstanding. And it's in Saitama, Saitama Prefecture. Oh, there you go. I'm not, I I I've been to Saitama. I went to see the G1 there, and I wasn't that impressed. But anyways, um, by the way, so people, you're like W H, you're fucking this up. Hey, I copy and pasted all of this unaltered from the New Japan website so go blame them okay uh december 7th in zip arena okayama december 9th in uh item hime i could be saying that wrong and no, december 12th item hime yeah and uh, december 12th in hiroshima green arena have you been to hiroshima i love hiroshima i i love the city of hiroshima like you know there's, I, a, lot good, there's a lot of good food in hiroshima there is i have a friend there uh i have to go back there someday in the same future. Uh, but and and that's 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 the the block dates and then both tournament finals will take place on December fifteenth in uh, Ryugoku Sumo Hall and uh, yeah I, who knows who's gonna win what in 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 either tournament uh, we'll find out 
soon. I'm sure they'll, they'll be announcing the, the participants of both fairly uh, soon. Uh, let's talk about Strong. They're going to be uh, taping Strong at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia. October 16th, the card is Arya Davari making his uh, New Japan Strong debut, taking on Alex Zane. Uh, maybe Alex Zane is going to be in the best of the Super Juniors. I could see that. I, I think it'd be it'd be good to bring him over. Clark Connors and Ren Narita taking on uh, TJP and Will Ospreay. <laughs> Fred Yehai, hey, he should be in the best of the Super Juniors versus Jay White. I'm very big fan of Fred Yehai. Um, that should be a good match. I want uh, Ren Narita in best of the Super Juniors, honestly. Is he a junior? He is. He's filling out a bit, but he's been in best of the Super Juniors. So, but he's like literally turning into Shibata every time we see him. So. I feel he's taller. He's too. He's he's getting to the point where he's too tall to be a junior. But then they put Trent Beretta in in the junior, so that's that was kind of weird to see him in there. And the Bushi. Uh, and the Bushi. Yes, true. Uh, Juice Robinson versus El Fantasmo. I don't care about this match. Uh, Chris Dickinson <laughs> versus uh, Minoru Suzuki. That should be fun. That should be fun. That, that'll be a that'll be a good uh good grappling match. I hope a little, if he, a little if, bit of blood sport. I wouldn't mind if Chris Dick hasn't got a spot in New Japan, but I hope like Ghetto sees him and says, you know, the dick strings, tuck them in. I don't want to see oh, them. God. Yeah. Tie them in a bow, tuck them in your trunks. I'm tired, I'm tired of seeing them just dangling I, I, there. I, I think they're stupid. That's just my opinion. Anyways, October 17th, uh, Eddie Kingston and John Moxley having a rematch against Suzuki Goon, Lance Archer, and Minoru Suzuki in a Philly street fight. That should be fun. Uh, in the 10-man tag, the DKC, Ren Narita, Rocky Romero, Carl Fredericks, and Fred Rosser taking on uh, uh, Team Filthy, Danny Limelight, Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs, uh, Jared Kratos, and Tom Waller. Hey, when are they bringing Tom Waller over to Japan? I need to see Tom Waller wrestling in Japan. <laughs> well, if, if he drops the New Japan Strong title sometime soon, then maybe that's a possibility. Uh, Jonathan Gresham. Taking on Alex Coughlin, that should be good. Ooh, that's going to be a good match. That John Gresham, like, geez, like that guy's like all like muscle now. He needs to come back for best of the Super Juniors. Is he? I, I don't. Is he? Is would he? I think all that muscle maybe put on too much weight on him. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Alex Zane will take on Will Osprey. That should be all kinds of flippy. Uh, Area Davari and Leo Rush, who just signed with AW. So he's not actually retiring, everyone. A <laughs> big surprise there. We'll take on Chris Bay and El Fantasmo. For those of you who don't know, Chris Bay on, on Impact TV joined you know, the, the Bullet Club via Jay White. So that's why you see Chris Bay's name a lot when we talk about New Japan. And uh, Fred Yehai and Wheeler Yuta. Ah, I love Wheeler Yuta too. We'll take so on the, the Bullet Club team of Hikuleo and Jay White. Both these shows look good. Are, are you going to be traveling to Philadelphia, Karen? Uh, it might be on my travel docket, actually. Some There's a, a couple of things coming up in my life, including that I will be starting to host a homestay student, student meaning a, a woman in her mid-20s that's coming to the States to learn English. And she is also a very large pro wrestling fan. And that's one of the shows she wants to go to. So fingers crossed. Was that a coincidence or did that it, just, they match you? No, we were we were put in touch via people from who are in the professional wrestling industry in Japan wow. who are mutual friends. Well, there you go. So yeah, but she she is a huge fan of New Japan and she really wants to go to these shows. And I'm like, well, you you, you need to get here first <laughs> because we need to still book plane tickets to go. But if possible, yeah, we're gonna try to make those shows. Maybe maybe we'll get a live report for you on the site. I mean, just saying. I, I'm willing. I'm willing. I'm willing and able. Uh, and final note: uh, Ring of Honor star Dragon Lee uh, teased that he might be in the best of Super Juniors. But he posted a photo of the Terminus logo on his Twitter. But who knows? Who knows why he hasn't been in New Japan <laughs> since whenever the last time he was there? There's a little bit of controversy there, wasn't there? Uh, there always is. Whether it's the relationship with them leaving CMLL or joining Ring of Honor or international quarantine restrictions, pass, passport and visa issues. Who knows? Let's move on to All Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, they're going to have an upcoming card in Kitamoto. Uh, and uh, of note are their two tag, tag uh, two, two title matches. First of all, the All Asia Tag Team Championships, the current champions of the Strong Hearts, El Lindemann and T-Hawk. Versus Koji Iwamoto and Ryuki Honda. That should be fun. I, 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 you know, I think Honda's 
growing as as a as a, as a young boy in the all Japan system and teaming with Iwamoto is a good thing for him. I don't I don't see a title change. I think Lindemann and T Hawk are are perfect all Asia tag champions. And and what are your thoughts about the team of of uh, Lindemann and, and T Hawk, Karen? I feel they're 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 a team right up your alley. Well, I I, I have been enjoying Glade because they're great. And I've seen them wrestle here and there on different promotions. I I really enjoy them. They've they've got a lot of really good energy. They're very fast and very technically sound. So, yeah. What about Lindemann's hair? It's very, uh, it's very, um, what's what's the era I'm thinking of? Uh, Like the 60s in Japan. What? what, yeah, he he could stand to get get a a fresh a fresh cut and maybe a, a, some toner in that blonde. So, um, and then the Garawa TV Championship. By the way, the ugliest title belt in in all of wrestling right now, and that's saying something. Uh, the current champion Shichi Shikawa will take on Big Japan's Daisuke Ooh. Sakimoto. Uh, that should be fun. Like both both dudes are kind of past their physical prime, but I can see them like just like turning it up and just beat the ever loving shit out of each other. Karen, that should be a fun match. I'm looking forward. I to will take a that. beefy hoss fight. That's fine with me. That's good. Um, some notes from all Japan. Uh, one, one third of the uh, all Japan six man tag team champions, uh, Carbell Ito. <laughs> have you seen this guy? Carbell Ito. He wears a tiger not. mask. He wears a tiger mask mask and is sponsored by the, the ja- I, I think Carbell is like an auto mechanic. Uh, okay. Uh, company. So like, you know, like Carbell, that sounds like that auto part. I think it's an auto parts company. <laughs> Anyways, he's sponsored by them. He it looks it looks so fucking stupid. Anyways, uh, he unfortunately fractured his right wrist. So oh, no. these uh these titles are gonna be um that they've been vacated. He was champions with uh, uh Sego Tachibana and Yoshitatsu. Uh but Tachibana, yes, Yoshitatsu will have a mystery partner and they'll face the team of uh Raimu Imai, Takao Mori, and Tamara for the vacant titles on the uh, October 16th show for all Japan. And uh, I, I think the mystery partner might be the grandson of Ricky Dozan, Chikara, who is one of the goddamn worst wrestlers going around right now. I don't know. I think he's even worse than Tatsumi Fujinami's son, Leona. Oh no. Have you seen Chikara? This guy. Uh, thankfully I have not, but then again, I'm still very new to, all Japan, so I could probably have seen him wrestle and be like, I have, I don't know. He's a freelancer, he but he he's ridiculous. I'm gonna have to sh- find you like a link to like some YouTube video or something. But like, yes, please please, fi- please find me matches because I always enjoy the match recommendations. I I I I hate Chikara more than I hate Jiro, and that's saying something. <laughs> wow. And Jiro can actually wrestle. Chikara cannot wrestle. You know. Anyways, the October 16th card is going to be a big one. Um, I'm going to go through the entire card here. Rising Hayato versus Ryoma Tsukamoto, uh, Devil Murasaki, uh, Kikutaru, Masao Inoue, and Mitsuya Nagai will take on Chikara. So he's going to that show. <laughs> Masanobu Fuchi, uh, Sushi, and Ryuji Hichikata. And I'm going to say Masanobu Fuchi is probably the best wrestler on his side of the team. And he's like 65 years old. Uh, Jun Saito, Koji Doi. Kumar Arashi and uh, Ray Saito. I don't know. I didn't know the Saito brothers joined uh, up with the uh, Total Eclipse here. What's going on here? We'll take on Kengo Mishimo, uh, Koji Iwamoto, Ryuki Honda, and Zeus. Uh, Kengo Mishimo from uh, 2AW. It's nice to see him coming back to do some shots for, for All Japan here, Karen. Uh, Andy Wu. Wow. Andy Wu from formerly of, uh, he used to be in All Japan. Then he went to to wrestle one and then he's i think he's been doing dates for for gleet maybe and with we'll team with black men's array we'll take on and they'll take on dan tamara and hikaru sato and as well as uh hokotu obori and yusuke kodama from total eclipse I, I i know you're enjoying the the total eclipse leader jake jake lee these days I, I i'm not gonna lie i have such a crush on jake lee right now because he's another one that he decided to turn heel and i'm just like wh- what where's this person been all of my life He's outstanding. I I love the balance of how he wrestles, whether it, you know it's speed or his striking, and it seems like he's coming into his own. And I just really enjoy that they've given him a faction, and he's just you know walking around, kicking ass and taking names. You know, I'm gonna say this, Karen. Like those of you who are listening, you don't watch all Japan, but you and you're big fans of Shinsuke Nakamura. 
If you if you miss old Shinsuke Nakamura, you should watch Dick Lee because he's very much like Ooh, old Shinsuke Nakamura. Yeah, that would be that would be a good way to describe him. There you go. Continuing on with this card, Atsuki Aoyagi and Yuma Aoyagi, the Aoyagi brothers. <laughs> they got Leona and Tetsuya Fujinami. <laughs> oh, you're gonna if you watch this show, Karen, you're gonna see two of my favorites in Chikara. And Leona, but by two of my favorites, I mean I two, two wrestlers I absolutely despise. Uh, World Junior Heavyweight Championship, Suki, the current champion, will take on Izanagi. That should be fun. I, I think Izanagi is very uh, underrated junior heavyweight. The World Tag Team Championship will be on the line as Runaway Suplex. Love that name. Shitaro Shino and Suwama, the current champions, will defend against the Twin Towers of Kohei Sato and Shuji Ishikawa. Suwama and Ishikawa, of course, were, you know, Violent Giants, long-time world tag team champions in all Japan for the last two years, but they split. They got re- different partners, and this should be fun. I'm looking forward to that one. And uh, Jake Lee, Oof. your favorite. Oof. The Shinsuke, for, for, for those who miss Shinsuke, uh, will take on his former tag team partner, his, his generational rival, in Kento Miyahara for the Triple Crown Heavyweight Championship. And this should be an excellent match, and this should be a match that Jake Lee wins to current to establish himself on as the top a, guy. As a top guy in the company, like Kento does not need the triple crown again. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't need to be near that belt anytime soon. Jake Lee beat Suwama. He, he he's gonna he should beat Kento in this match, and then he should just beat Zeus. He should just beat Ishikawa, and then build him up. And the person I think who should beat him is Ashino. Ooh, yes, please. Because you need to get Ashino to that level too. And you need to have Jake be the guy that makes him because they do have this really like long-term story that they're building between these two. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm into it. Um, let's talk about, uh, the, you know, all Japan, they announced their tag league and I've always been more of a, more of a fan of the real world tag league than I have been of a uh, world tag league. <laughs> These names get confusing. I like the All Japan Tech League more than I like the New Japan Tech League, just generally speaking. Uh, there's four blocks, Karen. Yeah. Some, some of these blocks are absolute shit, like A Block, uh, Abdullah Kobashi and Drew Parker. Oh my God. Uh, Hakuto Amore and Jake Lee. That's, that should be a fun team. Jun Saito, Ray Saito. They're, they're two big bro- twin brothers. They're very green. They're not that good right now. But hey, Runaway suplex, Shitaro Shino, and Suwama are in this block, but they don't have much to work with, unfortunately, here. I, I'm just hoping with, like, the Saito brothers, they're just going to suplex them all over this place and just have fun that way. Uh, B block, uh, Devil Murasaki and Izanagi from uh, from uh, uh, Purple Haze. El Lindemann and T-Hawk, they're going to be this. That should be fun. Uh, Miyahara and uh, Yuma Aoyagi, that should be good. Super Crazy and Tajiri, jeez. I, I think outside of the, the the purple haze team, Karen, this this actually looks like a really fun block. Yes, I always like a fun block, and I'm still again, all Japan's another one that I'm relatively new to, but I I do enjoy when they put interesting matches in a block. But I feel like I feel like it's it's it, this is another promotion where I have a very sharp learning curve where there's just so many people and. They bring in a lot of people from other promotions. Am I correct in saying this, that? This, this is yes, this is true. Like Tajiri is a member of the, of the. He's a contracted guy. He's he's one of the bookers, as far as I know, still. And Super Crazy is not someone who wrestles that often in Japan at all. But hey, he's got the connection with Tajiri from the ECW days. So there you go. That's why they're teaming him. But I'm gonna say Earmark uh, is Strong Hearts versus Next Dream. That should be an awesome match in that block. Uh, let's move on to C block. Cosmo Sakamoto, he's really enjoying the freelance life, Karen. He's teaming with Kengo Mishimo, uh, the Twin Towers, Kohei Sato and Shujishikawa, uh, Leona and Mitsuya Nagai. Oh, my God. Uh, and uh, <laughs> hey, this team might be worse. Seiko Tachibana and Yoshi Tatsu. <laughs> C-Block looks like shit, too. I'm sorry. It might be worse than A-Block. Uh, finally, D-Block, Koji Doi and Kumarashi. I, I like the team of uh, this Total Eclipse team. Like, uh, what were they called in, in Russell 1? Kumadoi, I think that was in their tag team name. Uh, that should be fun. They're, they're a good tag team. Uh, Koji Iwamoto and Ryuki Honda. Uh, Shigo, Shigehiro Irie and Zeus. That's, a, that's an awesome team. That is, that is a very dominant, beefy team. Yeah, that should be fun. That, I'm excited about them teaming. I, 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 as much as I like Zeus having his all Asia tag run with Izanagi, I think 
Iria is a much better partner for him. And finally, Takao Omori and Yuko Miyamoto. <laughs> there you go. Yuko Miyamoto is a deathmatch wrestler who can yeah. also actually wrestle. He's one of those rare ones. Um, they're teaming. And so I think D-Block looks really good. I think B-Block and D-Block are, are the, the standouts. And A and C, mm, not so much really there. But um, the tournament schedule for this is runs from November, 17th, uh, November 13th. To December 5th, uh, starts in Corkin Hall, moves into the uh, Hodogaya Public Hall, uh, Shinkiba First Ring, 2AW Square. Uh, you know, 2AW Square was a center of ProRes during the pandemic, Karen. Like yeah. every every promotion outside of Japan pretty much ran out of 2AW Square. Well, it's in Chiba, so it's it's outside of the, the state of emergency area. It's not in Tokyo. <laughs> also, 2AW owns it, so I got to imagine they, they made a, a nice... Oh, they made, yeah. they made a boatload of money. You know, renting that place out. Uh, yep. Moving on to uh, Edion Arena, Osaka, uh, number two, the arena number two in the basement, not not the main one. Uh, uh, Nagoya Congress Center, uh, Odawara Arena, and uh, ends off in Corken Hall. There you go. So starts in Corken Hall, ends off in Corken Hall. You know, I kind of, I you know, like I I don't have any aspirations that all Japan's gonna ever reach the heights of its success, like like the '90s and running Budokan and Tokyo Dome ever again. But hey, you know what? If if your main if your if your big shows are at Corrigan, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, especially when they're they're talking about lifting the restrictions and po- as a result could possibly sell more seats in Korakuen and start packing that place for full of bodies. I mean, you know, stadiums and arenas are great and all, but there's something to be said about a, a capacity crowd at Korakuen Hall. Oh yeah, I it's my favorite place to watch wrestling. I've uh, yet to watch a watch a show there. You've never been to Corrigan Hall? Nope. When I, I went that. to wrestle, when I when we met at Wrestle Kingdom like two years ago, I went to shows all over Tokyo. Not a single one of them was at Korakuen Hall. Wow my 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 bucket list is now just like uh, uh, Shinjuku Face, uh, and uh, maybe go see a uh, 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 you know uh, what what's the name of the word? Choco Pro <laughs> Ichigaya Square. There you go. <laughs> just I, I don't think it's wrestling, but it's it would be fun to go to one of those shows but anyways um let's just round off the the the, the, the all japan news uh rev pro announced that all japan uh all japan's francesco akira will debut at its show on october 3rd in london they'll take on robbie x so francesco getting out of japan finally and then just kind of doing a europe european tour hopefully he's going to come back to, to to all japan um before the end of the year it seems like they're they're really supporting him on this tour of going all over the place. Like I see that like the All Japan, at least the English account, keeps retweeting all of his exploits. So I, I feel like he's part of the family regardless. So maybe it, hopefully he'll be there by year's end. Yes. But uh, I guess it all depends on what the immigration system is like coming towards the end of the year. We, we shall see. October 10th, he'll also be p- appearing in Scotland for Insane Championship Wrestling. Uh, that's such a mid name for a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Insane championship wrestling. Oh, okay. Do they have juggalos? Uh, anyways. <laughs> uh, no, no, I don't think there's a clown posse there. They're, he will be taking on someone named Ian Skinner at uh, their TV tapings. They have TV tapings in Glasgow. Okay, there you go. Uh, Tajiri is set to compete I- in America for Major League Wrestling's uh, Fightland television taping tomorrow. I know. What does it say tomorrow? Like some. It was tonight, wasn't it? Is it tonight? I believe he won the title. <laughs> the MLW title? Oh, the well, which which one? The the mid the junior, uh, they have a junior title? Yeah. I can't Hold remember. on. I'll check it real quick. Oh, he's he's challenging Myron Reed for the MLW World Middleweight Championship in a, in a four way, which also includes Armis and Ares. Oh, that should be fun. That should be a fun match. I'm sure it's going to make YouTube. MLW's all of their stuff is on like the YouTube. No. Hey, if it gets monetized and it makes them money, good on them. Did so? Did you find the result? Did he win? I did not. Yeah, I'm, okay. sc- I'm scrolling right now as fast as I can. It's okay. We're Sorry. moving on. It's okay. No, no one cares about the MLW World Middleweight title. Ah, and- two hours ago, and new hashtag uh, MLW World Middleweight Champion. <laughs> To Jerry. Oh, uh, there you go. He's gonna wear that belt on all Japan television. <laughs> They're not getting that belt back. That, that 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 he's taking that with him, and that's it. That's the end of it. Sorry, Court. You're 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 out of luck. Tajiri's never returning that physical belt to you. <laughs> hope hope so. he didn't like that belt. So yeah, 
There you go. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to just quickly move on to the rest of the news. Pro Wrestling Noah, we don't have that much news for Pro Wrestling Noah. The, the N1 tournament semifinals, which are happening later later tonight for us. Uh, well, the, the semifinals have already finished. Oh, we, okay. have, we, ha- we have our finalists. Who are our finalists, Karen? Keno beat Kaito Kitamiya to advance to the finals, and Nakajima beat Funaki to advance to the finals. So we have an all Congo finals. Did, didn't we say this at the beginning of the show? We sure did. There you go. <laughs> what, so, what was the match we wanted that everyone would want to see? That would be the match. That would be the match to see. So I'm, I'm going to predict that uh, Nakajima is going to be Keno. In, yeah. In the finals, which will take place at, on October 3rd in Corican Hall. And, so probably uh, at the af- at the end of this card, because we're already on the fifth match, which is the GHC Junior Heavyweight Championship uh, prior match. So Right. Okay. Well, who's the champion? Hayata? I don't care. About uh, uh, yeah, Hayata and Ogawa. I, I, I don't care about anything Hayata does. Anyways, <laughs> move on to the other uh, cyber fight promotion, DD Pro Wrestling. Yes, I'm going to talk about DDT on this show. Um, Bill, I know no, full disclosure, I know nothing about DDT. We're just, I'm just going to run through the news very quickly then, Karen. All right. <laughs> Uh, they're gonna. They announced that they're gonna have their judgment show. That's like their big WrestleMania type show, in March twenty second of next year in uh, Koku Gikan. It'll be the first company's first show in that uh, in that in that venue since November of two thousand nineteen. Uh, they're gonna have a show October twelfth at Corken Hall coming up. Uh, the the main matches on this show are gonna be all ta- all like all championship matches. The KOD. Eight man tag team championships because you know Karen a six man tag team tag team titles aren't enough. They have to have an DTS have an that eight man tag team championship. Bit extra. It does. Uh, Akito Hiroshi Yamato, Keigo uh, Nakamura, and uh, Yoshiaki Yatsu. They're the champions. We'll take on Hideki Okatani, Jun Akiyama, uh, Mizuki Watase, and Yusuke Kodama. So I really feel they should be called the eight person tag team championships because uh, it's intergender. So okay. That's cool. That that should be it. Uh, the DDT Extreme Championship will see Shinya Aoki. <laughs> it's great versus Yukata. <laughs> wow, that is a match. Uh, Shinya Aoki used to be a you know a pretty famous sheet fighter, as I recall. <laughs> He's going to take on legendary jo- Joshi Yukata. So it's, it's so DDT. Uh, KOD Tag Team Championship. Uh, this should be really good. I'm looking forward to watching this. Konosuke Takashita and uh, Shinma uh, Katsumata. They're the current uh, tag team champions will take on Hiroshima and uh, Naomi Yoshimura. That should be a fun match. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to watching that. And finally, for the DDT Universal Championship, uh, Daisuke Sasaki, the champion, will take on Minoru Fujita. I have zero to no interest in, in, in watching this, in which, you know, which I'm being redundant by saying zero to no. <laughs> That's just how, how disinterested you are. Well, I, I don't care for Daisuke Sasaki, and I think Minoru Fujita's had his his best days were were like in two thousand and four, maybe. In Got 01. it. Uh, DDT Pro Wrestling is also going to have a, 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 a Grand, Grand Prix, Prix tournament. <laughs> yes, the Do uh, D O or Do <laughs> Do uh, the the Do turn, Grand Prix tournament. The the fields in, they have two blocks: A block, uh, B block. A block is Bodyguard Junakiyama. Naomi Yoshimura, Tetsuya Endo, uh, Yuji Hino, and Yuki Ueno. Uh, B Block, Chris Brooks, uh, Hiroshima, uh, Kazusada Higuchi, Konosuke Takashida, Mao, and uh, Yuji Okabashi from Big Japan. This, this, should, this looks like a fun, uh, fun tournament. I, I probably won't catch everything, but hey, I'm going to try to see at least some of these matches. Like for me, I'm just going to take a quick look. They've announced all the matches. I'm not going to go through all of them. Let's see. Uh, uh, Takashita versus Okabayashi. That should be fun. That's on November 3rd. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, let's see. Uh, no, nothing on the 6th for me. November 7th, Nigata. Oh, rematch. Chris Brooks versus Konosuke Takashita. They had a really good match recently that I that I watched from DDT. That was really, really good. I recommend that. You might have gotten a, 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 a cheeky link to that one there maybe if you haven't let me know uh, i'm talking to karen not to any of you listeners up there, uh, <laughs> i'll whistle i'll whistle innocently and be like yeah no i'm gonna need to see that match so i've heard good things about that one uh let's see november 10th uh let's see what's oh brooks versus Yuji 
That's interesting. Uh, Junak Yama versus Tetsuya Endo. That's that's a good match. That's I think that's they, they've done that a couple of times. Uh, uh, KBS Hall. Oh, they're going to Kyoto, November thirteenth. Oh, the one with the really pretty stained glass. Yes, I've been I there wanna, once. I want to go there. It's beautiful. It's so it's so unassuming on the outside. You would be like, where is this beautiful? you know stained glass wrestling venue oh it's in this building that looks like an office oh. it's so japan anyways uh chris brooks will take on uh higuchi that should be good uh let's see what else we got there um yeah that's about it for that for me uh november 14th in osaka uh oh higuchi versus okabayashi that should be a big beefy match if you like beefy matches karen i do that. enjoy a good beefy match so there you go <laughs> higuchi versus okabayashi uh yeah, and Hiroshima versus Takashita. And finally, in, in final night day of block matches, November 21st, Cork, Cork and Hall. Um, let's see what they got. Hiroshima versus Okabashi. Higuchi versus Takashita. Endo versus Weno. And Bodyguard versus Junakiyama. Ooh, two former All Japan guys wrestling in DDT. Uh, so you have you you just signed up, right, for the new Wrestle Universe? I did just sign up for the new Wrestle Universe, which is why I got, have our Noah updates because I actually have it on in the background on my TV. There you go. Better than um, so for someone who's not familiar with the DO tournament, what does the winner receive? I don't know, probably a title shot. I don't I don't I know it's like which like which title because they seem to have a whole uh, bunch of them. The uh, the the the, the one that Kenny and Coda used to hold? Uh, the open weight title? Okay. The one that Miko Satamura used to hold. So, oh, okay. If, if she held it, then it must be the main title. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I'm not being if, facetious if, if either. If it's been blessed by Mako, then yes. I'm not being facetious, title. by the way. Like, she's not going to, like, you know, just go to, if they just gave her, like, the, the secondary title, she'd be like, no, give me the main title. Yeah. So, there you go. That's my champion. And let, let's talk about Big Japan for wrestling. I think that's that that'll be it. And then oh, the one more after this is going to be great for for my friend uh, Joey Bay. I'm going to talk about freedoms at the end here. <laughs> you, are we going to skip over Gleet then? No, we're going to talk about Gleet. I'm just going to get. I'm just saying, like at the end, it's it's going to be uh, just a quick little blurb about round. a quick blurb about freedoms and you know, which I don't normally talk about because it's a deathmatch garbage promotion. But anyways, Big Japan for wrestling. The big news, Karen, and something I'm really happy about. One of my favorite wrestlers, Takuya Nomura, he defeated Yasufumi Nakanoe to win the BJW World Strong Heavyweight Championship on September 20th in Sapporo. I haven't watched that Woo! match yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be watching probably on Monday because I'm going out tomorrow to meet some friends, belated birthday party, I think something like that. Um, so that that should be. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that he won. He, he deserves this belt. They've given it to Daichi Hashimoto multiple times. He doesn't deserve that belt. But Takuya does, and I'm 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 here for it. Give him a long reign. Let him beat Takemoto, Okabayashi, all of them. Let him defend that belt 1,700 times, and I'll be happy. But he 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 will defend this his new title against Takemoto because you know Takemoto is the BJW strong legend, and they're going to have a match October 18th in Corken Hall. Uh, it's worth noting, like I mentioned earlier, Takemoto is challenging Shuji Shikawa for the. Garawa TV Championship, one of the ugliest belts in all of wrestling right now, on October 9th. So it could be a champion versus a champion, but not for a title versus title. Because I don't want to keep wearing that uh, god awful ugly belt because it, it looks just terrible. Uh, Yuko Miyamoto will attempt his second defense of the Big Japan Deathmatch Heavyweight Championship against uh, Hideyoshi Kamitani on the same show. And, and Kamitani was primarily a strong wrestler, but recently, you know, he's migrated into the deathmatch stuff and I, I'm I'm not I'm not into it. I I just wanted that those divisions to be completely separate from one another. Um and Drew Parker, we mentioned him before. He he won the GCW Ultra Violent Championship championship uh I think back September or August at a GCW show. Uh and he's gonna defend it against Akira Hyodo, another guy who's was primarily a strong strong wrestler, but now he's seeing death matches, and and there, that's going to be happening October 9th in in Cork and Hall. So there you go, like Drew Parker acquitting himself really well in 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 the death match you know style in Big Japan Pro Wrestling. Karen, not something I I enjoy watching. Like he's very good at uh, putting a skewer through both cheeks of his oh. mouth. 
And, yeah, and, I don't and, I don't have the stomach for death matches like my, some of my friends have tried to get me into watching it. And it's like I see blood and I either get nauseated or I pass out. So I'm like the worst person to like go to a death match show with or try to convince to watch it. I appreciate the art form and I appreciate that people enjoy it. It's just not for me. No, I I I just don't want grass, you know, the glass from light tubes like landing in my lap, which just yeah. happened at Cork and Hall with me. Anyways, uh, Gleet, great Gleet. We, we call it Gleet on this show, by the way. Uh, <laughs> okay. They held a press conference September 29th. This is really interesting to announce that. Uh, I saw that. Hayato Tamura has joined the company. Uh, Tamura has been signed to exclusive contact with Ledet Entertainment, which is the parent company of Gleet, uh, since June 10th. But it was interesting because, you know, Zero One, Pro Wrestling Zero One, they thought, yo, know, he's going to join us. But like Pro Wrestling Zero One, uh, you know, the, the, the top brass there, Oki, Oki Dada and Shigeru Tani, they held a press conference to announce that Zero One has ceased his working relationship with Gleet because of they are alleging that Gleet uh, did contract tampering Oof. with Tamara. Um, so after Tamara left Just Tap Out, which was Takamichi Noku's promotion, he, he trained there, he started off there. Uh, in January, he became a freelancer, but Oki Dada said Zero One signed a memorandum of understanding with with Alpha Japan promotion, this is Tamara's, uh, you know, like agency. Ooh, the, the spicy. Agency. And, and and later, Okidata explained that you know Tamara contacted him and said, "Hey, I entered negotiations with Glee to join that promotion because they actually have money." I'm I'm parap- I'm, I'm that's my own embellishment, by the way. Uh, <laughs> after that, uh, Tamara stopped all communication with Zero One because they don't have any money. That's my own embellishment as well. Uh, Okidata said, uh, Gleet president and CEO Hiroyuki Suzuki confirmed the mutual interest between that they, have, that they have money. Hey, with a lot, they, no one needs to confirm that. Ledet's behind it. Ledet has money, so therefore Gleet has money. The, the mutual interest between Gleet and Tamara. But Suzuki also called Tamara's behavior wrong and unreasonable because he wanted to get actually get paid. I don't think that's wrong and unreasonable. Uh, Okidata, Okidata compared the situation to a person pulling a knife on someone who had been a good friend. Uh, okay, Dada, you're out of your fucking mind if you think that's if that's a comparison you're making, my friend. Um, as a result of, of Gleet and Zero One ceasing its relationship, L. Lindemann, who was the uh, Zero One uh, World Junior Heavy- International Junior Heavyweight Champion, he's been stripped of that title and and the Zero One World Junior Heavyweight Championship. What? There's, they have two Junior Heavyweight titles? One's called the International, one's called the jun- World Junior? Listen, you guys need to get some money instead of having all these championship belts that do the same goddamn thing. But world and international mean the same thing. We only have one planet. You know, it's like when 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 Rick Rude was the NWE International Champion and Vader was a WCW World Champion. It's like you're just confusing the issue here, guys. But that was WCW in the '90s for you. Uh, yeah. Fuminori Abe, he won both titles. <laughs> I can't believe there's two two junior titles and one's called international, one's called world. So it's dumb. At Zero One's show on September 9th in, in Shinkiba, I love Fuminori Abe, so good for him. But really, like, I, I, I don't blame Tamara at all for jumping to Glee. If he jumped, he, what is this bullshit? What did he say? It, it, he signed a what? A memorandum of understanding? What does that mean? That That's, it feels like it's a, like a, it's like giving someone a promise ring, kind of like it, it's not a con. If he didn't sign a contract, he didn't sign a contract. You can say that you have the intent to join a company all you want, but until you put pen to paper on a formal contract, you have the. Op- I would think you have the option to exercise to exit to exit from that con- that arrangement if it's not a contract. It's so you're saying that zero one is Austin Aries and Tamara is a. Uh... <laughs> See it turned turned out. Out. <laughs> that's what you're telling me then right they didn't put a ring on it i'm sorry so, so that makes Gleet uh alistair black sure did oh there you go okay for those of you who the tommy who and out, tommy and or uh, malachi black listen i i can't get behind this dude he's still wearing that that black eye paint on his face it's so dumb but anyways karen let's wrap it up pro wrestling freedoms joey joey bay this is for you my brother because i'm also going to mention your other favorite promotion Game Changer Wrestling, GCW, they've announced that uh, actually good deathmatch wrestler, Masashi Takeda, he's coming to GCW November 12th in Detroit. 
and November 13th in Chicago. And, and I'm pretty sure Joey's going to go to at least one of these shows or try to. Along with uh, Joshi Deathmatch wrestler, Rina Yamashita, she's also coming to GCW. And, and, and I know there are some people freaking out right now. My God, W just mentioned both Pursing Freedoms and GCW and didn't say shit about either of them. Well, there you go. I'm just announcing Wait that. Wait for it. <laughs> no. Hey, Takeda is a great get. And I'm not so familiar with uh, Rina Yamashita, but hey, a lot of people are like on my timeline saying, wow, that's a great get. I want to go see her. Great. Yeah, I've, 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 had, I've seen the same response on my timeline as well. So there you go. That's I'm just I, I, I did this mainly as as a as a bone to throw to the, the mud show outlaw Joey Bay because he likes this crap. But, uh, but there you go. I've, I didn't say I didn't say anything bad about either promotion. There you go. So there you go. Anyways, uh, that's we, we got we got a lot done on this show karen and any final words final words i mean i I, i'm glad to be here i had a good time you know if we want to do this again for super juniors because you know i love my junior heavyweights hey i'm totally down oh my god to find me just painted me into a corner okay we'll have you on for the super juniors show like maybe we'll get a three-way going you me and john pollock if if, if the timing is right we can we can do uh, a a three-person booth talk reviewing uh, th- that th- that tournament and the World Tag League because the finals are both on the same day. So there oh, you go. That's right. Well, we'll see how the timing works out there, Karen. So maybe, maybe we'll get that done. You know uh, but yeah, but yeah, where, where can other people, I know where to find you. How about those people who don't know where to find you? Where can For they find those you? Those who, who care to find me, I am on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at Hey Karen Sensei. And that's where probably the, the fastest way and easiest way to find any content that I do. I do put translations in Japanese and I do English translations as well. Um, and then you can also find me on post. If you, if you, if you search for me on post wrestling, you'll just find the one article for now, but it'll be go- The number will be going up soon. So yeah. Also like you do a lot of stuff on WordPress. Yeah, I have my own personal blog that I do. Uh, I Lately, I've been doing some updates and stuff about stardom and other wrestling. I do talk about travel, Japanese culture. Um, I do study Japanese in my free time because you, it's one of those skills. If you don't continue with it, you rapidly lose it, so which is frustrating. So it's so 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 yeah. Moody Moody. Moody Moody. No, it's not impossible. Moody Moody Moody. Everything is possible, WH. Don't give up. I know. Uh, so, but yeah, so, so if, if people have interest in Japanese culture and stuff like that, my blog has, you know, I talk about my time in Japan. I talk about my time as a flight attendant. I talk about, you know, being a homeowner and be, you know, being a dog mom. And, you know, I post a lot of pictures of food. So if you like food, I'm your girl. I think I my Instagram for that you know, <laughs> or my Twitter. Cause I do actually anything I post on Instagram, I post on Twitter as far as what I'm eating that I feel is, is, is tweet worthy or gram I mean, is worthy. Good, good, good food is worth the gramming. And, you know, if you feel like you need to tweet about it as well, then you know what? It must be dang good. Eating. So that's all I just, gotta say. Just so people understand as well that you will never ever see me make a TikTok because I hate that social platform. Oh yeah. No, absolutely not. I'm Never too old for that. T- TikTok. No, I'm too old and I think it's shit. I think it's it's responsible for it's gonna destroy Western civilization as we know it eventually. It's it not climate change. It's gonna be TikTok. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> Anyways, uh yeah, so uh on Twitter at hey Karen Sensei, is it right? That is correct. Uh, at post wrestling, she's gonna be doing a lot of content for us. Yeah, you know, like you should get on the train. Maybe you should you can you can do the the reviews. For the New Japan World Tag League and Best of Super Juniors, you should contact. I, I, John I have a I have a feeling that someone's already beaten me to that punch. But. You never know. You never know. They might not want to cover it. We'll see. You should ask. You know, maybe John Pollock's listening to this right now. Well, I mean, whenever he's going to listen to it, would be right now. Really, like it's, <laughs> you know, time, time, time is timey. What is a little timey wimey? It's not a, it's not a flat circle necessarily. But anyways, maybe John Pollock's listening to this. And thinking, you know, I'm going to send her an email right now. And then you're going to be getting an email, not right now, Karen, but in the future. You know I will look forward to that email possibly so, in the future. You got to throw your hat in the, you got to throw your, your hat in the ring with this kind of stuff. Like, cause there are people who do want to do, you know, articles and reviews for, 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 for John, you know, yes. like so there you go. So anyways, talk to John about that. I'm sure you, if you, if you get in 
really early, you can, no problems. But you're doing a lot of our, our stardom content. Bless you, because like I don't have the time to do any of that stuff outside of the, the previous. But that was just like, hey, I have time. <laughs> So I'm gonna write the preview for the for the Grand Prix. I think I said Shuri was a was my was my leading candidate to win the whole thing in that in that article. It was a good shout. So there you go. Um, but yeah, like you can find me at WH Park Nine. You can find me the long and winding railroad. Uh, we're having our Akira Tawe biography coming up this month on the long and winding railroad. Um, you know, I, I I I'm always I almost spoiled who's gonna be. In no, on November show, I'm not going to spoil it. It's a it's, it's a big get for me, big Ooh, get for well, post wrestling. I, you, I look you, forward to listening. Um, but you'll see, all find me on the Patreon Post Wrestling Cafe with waiting, and we're going to have the finale of What If. Karen, do you watch any of the MCO TV shows on on Disney Plus? I do not have Disney Plus. Really, you are yes, in Florida. I, you, I you have go to Disney. So many streaming services that i pay for streaming services as much as i pay for my cable so disney is one of the ones that i've had to weed out but yeah i've been told i need to get back on the disney train but i'm just like you know what the mouse gets enough of my money as it is right now so can i just suggest something it's like i i subscribe to some streaming platforms and then i do bartering with some friends (laughs) And they get access to my streaming services and I get access to their streaming services. So I don't pay for Disney plus I don't pay for Netflix, <laughs> but guess what? Those people don't pay for streaming wrestling, streaming site, a B or C. There you go. So, you know, like, uh, I say you need to like find people who you can share. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta make so friends. You gotta create Making friends at my age is hard. I don't like doing it. Karen, you need you need to create shared shared passwords with certain with, with people you trust, and they get access to some of your streaming sites. You get access to some of their streaming sites, and your your cable bill and your streaming bills will go down. Trust me. <laughs> the the key point in that is people I trust, but my the people the circle of people I trust is very 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 small. Oh. Well, me too. But I thankfully at least two of these people give me access to their, their <laughs> streaming sites and I get them access to my streaming sites. I'm not going to say which ones they get access to. And I'm not going to say which ones they give me access to because I don't want to get me or, or, or anyone else in trouble. trouble. Listen, no, I pay for some of them. This is not stealing or anything like that. It's, it's called, uh, it's called sharing because we're all giving money to, to them. Like, and here's the other thing, like WWE network is one of those things because I, have sworn I will never give money directly to the McMahon family. And I have, even at that NXT show I went to Toronto two years ago, I didn't pay for the ticket. So I didn't give Vince any money. So there you, there you go. go. There you go. Like people say, you went to that NXT WH. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't pay for the ticket and I didn't buy any drinks and, and I didn't buy any merchandise because it was all crap. You yeah. Know? Um, that's just my feeling. I know people like some of the NXT merch at that time. It's fine. But I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't even enjoy the show. It was like one match I enjoyed. I think it was like, who was it? It was like, it was Io Shirai. Or who did she fight on that show in Toronto? It was a takeover. Probably Candice LeRae. Probably Candice. Yeah, that was a <laughs> good show. Probably Candice. It was better than the main event, which was the three stages of hell between Gargano. Then it was definitely Candice. And, and, and Cole. God, that was a terrible. I was so bored. I fell asleep. The cage came down. And I fell asleep. And I knew the, it was a cage match because I could, I was up in the, the top upper upper decks and i guess oh there's the cage oh, i wonder what the third fall is going to be oh it's going to be this fucking cage match anyways yeah william regal it's a cage match oh, no kidding you're we not know. Ready for we know games we know william we know it's anyways anyways that's where you can find me karen's going to be karen's going to be doing more post stuff check her socials out it's all good and until the next time i do a show hopefully with john i will say See you later and bye.